where we uh, where we last left off, you guys had just fit just crossed the mountains into the uh, kingdom of Ambria. We're gonna fast forward a, l a little bit of time after that. You guys were originally in the city of uh, Yandaras. Uh, your journeys have taken you beyond there. This adventure is going to be starting in the town of, I believe it's the town of Thistlehold. Let me see. Yes, Thistlehold. Let me write that down because I'll forget that. Uh, so the reason you would have decided to travel to Thistlehold specifically, uh, one, it is a large and fairly typical Ambrian city. Uh, there is a... <clears throat> uh, I'm trying to think of what to, uh, what to call it. The, the Ordo Magica, the wizards, have a huge... Uh, a huge tower there filled with masters and books and rituals but mainly the town contains this guy by the name of master vernon uh, master vernon is a uh, very well experienced wizard he was part of the ordo magica um, he has <clears throat> officially retired from that organization there are many different rumors as to why he's retired, uh, but he is like the most famous tutor in all of Ambria in terms of magic and uh, uh, the forest of Dovacor. So not only do wizards go to him for advice, but just anybody who is thinking of adventuring or, or traveling towards the forest uh, tend to have a little audience with Master Vernon. Um, Bartolom probably knows uh, Master Vernon Maybe not personally, but he probably knows of him better than everyone else. He's fairly famous in the Ordo Magica. And even though he's not a part of the organization anymore, he still enjoys many of his privileges. Like, he's allowed to get into their facilities and use the ritual chambers and books. And uh, he's still well-respected. He's just not a not a member. Um, there are some, and Barlatum would, would be aware of this, there are some that uh, distrust uh, Master Vernon a little bit. He... He knows a lot about the Iron Pact, and what he's most famous for, aside from being a tutor in the ways of magic in the forest, uh, he's been trying to broker peace between uh, Ambria and the elves for, for years now, uh, with not great results. Uh, but he knows so much about the elves, and he has met with them on so many occasions, uh, that many people fear he is actually an agent of the elves, an agent of the Iron Pact. Uh, spying for them, pointing out targets. Rather that's true or not, uh, who's who's to say? Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's where we'll we'll start off. And we should probably introduce since uh, Father Father Ansel has temporarily uh, sought adventures elsewhere as Matt has taken over the wizard uh, Bartolom. Why don't you tell us, Matt, a little bit about your uh, your new character? So I wanted to ask you about that. Are we deviating from his printed thing in that uh, in that handout you gave us? Was this about him being being told he was returning the uh, the sunstone? Yeah, sunstone. We we can go ahead and say he's already done that. Uh, in, okay, uh, so I, he just won't have the sunstone, yeah. and then that'll be the way. The, be. They they did it really wonky in the previous adventure. Like they put it in his stat block, and they're like, "Oh, if this is a player character, make an NPC have it." But I don't know why they didn't just give it to an NPC then to begin with. The, 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 only, the only difference in plot is if it was a player character, instead of one wizard transporting it, two wizards are transporting it. And they did that just, just so the NPC could get robbed at a key plot point. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So he, All right, well then uh, he'll, I'll just modify his story slightly. So he was, uh, his, he was staying in, uh, what was that place called before that we were all in? Oh, the, the, the lands to the, the south? Yeah. Um, 
I can't remember what the lands to the south. Were All right, whatever. He was there. His master died, um, and he ended up deciding to uh, pack everything up and move to the north and see what he could make for himself. Ended up traveling with these guys. All right, yeah. And so you guys will remember Barlotum was the NPC before who had the sunstone stolen from him. So you're already you're already well acquainted uh, acquainted with him, and. Uh, for for sake of plot convenience, we're just going to assume that you guys have decided to stick together, uh, at least temporarily. Uh, to be fair, I think some bonds were built uh, in the middle of that little wagon circle fighting those horrible monsters. But uh, <laughs> what, what I want to do is go through the characters. Now that you guys have traveled north and are heading into Thistlehold for uh, Master Vernon's Council. I kind of want to hear what the players' uh, thoughts and goals now that they're in the north. Like, it could just be to find honest work. Maybe they're thinking of going to Davacor uh, to search for things. Maybe they're curious about that crown and they want to follow up uh, on that 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 artifact that you never saw but caused you so much trouble. Uh, so, for whatever reason that you might, or whatever whatever things you might be hoping to come out of meeting with. Master Vernon, or the future of your character. Uh, there's no wrong answers here. Just imagine whatever you want for them. So for Bartolome, he's uh, just pretty much interested in expanding his knowledge wherever he can, learning about pretty much everything. So staying with the group is advantageous to him there, so he's pretty much willing to do whatever it is because it'll probably uh, help him gain some new knowledge. And He's particularly interested in um, the Elven lands, even though they are a bit dangerous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the northern part of Davacor. Discovering the uh, the secrets and the history there. Um, my Fenya basically is, uh, I mean, generally looking for some sort of success monetarily or fame-wise, but being like a small goblin understands wanting to stick around companions that seem to be reliable and 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 successful and staying alive, and so kind of generally hanging around and, and trying to push towards general success. So, Rajor is uh, in a way a little bit like Bartolom, but uh, in a more simple manner. He just w wants to see what actually is happening uh, in the world outside of where he started from a little place uh, in the bright side of Davokar. And of course, ultimately, he still has no dreams, strange dreams about the forest. He still has no idea where he came from, what is all happening. And, and this part is actually, uh, he found a little bit of an acceptance, something that uh, wasn't exactly uh, what he saw uh, otherwise. He is just a huge hulking brute. And uh, here he has, uh, in a way, a kindred soul in Fenya, who is uh, just a strange in the eyes of the Ambryons. And then those guys who actually came from the old lands. And uh, the priest, I actually see that he, is, he will be rejoining us. Uh, uh, <laughs> never, never left, more like. <laughs> no, no, he turned around and said, you know what, I should probably go back. I'm already out here, you know. I was going to say, hey guys, get, you've met Ansel, get ready to meet Ansel. <laughs> <laughs> Ansel's, pro Ansel's personality will change slightly after he gets out of those terrible mountains. But... Oh, no. We forced you to, to let us kill an innocent man, kind of. But, well, he wasn't really innocent. Was, wait, wait, which 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 guy are you, which guy are you talking about? Because one yeah, of those what? one of those murders well, was Ansel's idea. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Wait. I Sorry, guys, that's one, on me. I, I thought I was the one for turning them over. Oh no, I'm talking about the guy in the in the tower in the. the oh the, the yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. I'm talking about when we had the moral conundrum of whether to give up. Uh, Oh, but before he transformed, Ansel was going to secretly free him in the middle of the night, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> then he transformed, and he was like, oh, 
Uh, I guess we can't really let them live, can we? Yeah, don't worry, Jack. We'll fill you in on that little plot. It doesn't really may have any weight on this adventure, but we'll fill you in on that little plot point. What happened? Maybe he just buried all that deep trauma way deep down inside. But uh, going on, all right, Zeus. I didn't. I didn't see exactly when you jumped on here. You're, you're stealthy like that. <laughs> I've been mean, here for the other times. I'm just fine. But uh, yeah, you guys are uh, basically. I'll, I'll summarize it. You're in a. T you're entering. You're just entering a town called Thistlehold. Uh, there is a huge tower of the Ordo Magica there, the wizards. Uh, but mainly, there's this guy, Master Vernon. Master Vernon has traveled all over Ambria and in the forest. He has talked to elves. He has seen everything, and he is a famous tutor. He just teaches people about magic and the forest. Uh, and he is a. Uh, he is a peace broker, at least he's trying to be a peace broker between the elves and the rest of Ambria, which makes people suspicious that he's actually an agent of the elves. Uh, but right now you guys are kind of going to see him for whatever for whatever personal reasons you might have. There's a lot to get from Master Vernon. Um, he, he knows he knows a lot. Uh, but anyways, Zeus, I want to ask, what, what, are your, what is your character's uh, hopes and dreams now that he is in... Uh, Ambria, and uh, what what has convinced him to uh, stay with this party? Uh, I, my goal is to figure out why my uh, parents abandoned me and sold me off, and uh, to find a new friend. So ever since the, you know, the priest left me, I have no one else to hang out with. So uh, oh, he didn't leave you. He, he's, he's still here. The priest is back. We have a new we have a new player taking him over. So your buddy is still, <laughs> your buddy is still present. He just has a different voice. Oh, I, I'm yeah, glad he's a he's a good compliment to the party. He, he well, really and is. It, and it works with him changing voices because you change bodies. Oh, yeah, so we're, we're best friends, Jack. <laughs> Sick. And yeah, that's about it. So it's following the group, seeing where life leads me. All right, so Jack, just to catch you up, briefly summarizing the previous session, uh, you guys were to the, uh, the, the lands that are to the south of these gigantic mountains. Uh, the lands to the south are, like, cursed and dying, and you really just can't live there anymore. So lots of people are trying to escape to the north of the mountains. Um, so you, with a, a bunch of other hopeful travelers, join this very, uh, very rugged wagon train for a dangerous winter trip through the mountains. Uh, you laughed, you cried, memories were shared. Uh, probably the biggest plot point, though, was a... Uh, a couple of members, uh, the, the Pathfinders for the caravan, you you guys discovered they had f they had previously been treasure hunters in Davakor, which is this huge haunted forest to the north of the kingdom you guys are in now. Uh, they got into some uh, ruins. Uh, they, they discovered an artifact that they shouldn't have. Uh, and anybody that goes too deep into the forest gets marked for death by the elves that live there. Uh, so basically everyone else in their treasure hunter po hunting party died. The elves followed you guys to the mountains, gave you an ultimatum to either have your wagon train attacked or turn them over. Everybody basically wanted to turn them over except for Jack and uh, Lester, this witch hunter, who wanted to either help or study them, depending on your particular point of view. But most of the, uh, most of the priests and holy men... Uh, would not be in favor of working with elves, or especially turning humans over to the elves for any reason. Uh, but your hands kind of got forced. One of the guys transformed into a monster because of the corruption from the artifact. Uh, and the other guy... I think Nino stabbed him to death. <laughs> and then they turned over their bodies to the elves. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. So just a, a quick... Uh, quick... Uh, like 15 second thing on the on the, the setting so ambria is this kingdom that is covering all this all these like fertile plains and hills um ambria is basically the people of ambria used to live south of this huge mostly impossible mountain range they got attacked by a bunch of evil necromancers huge fantasy war just go ahead and picture that in your brain uh, it forced them north of the mountains where they found these fertile lands, so they've sort of rebuilt their kingdom to the best they could. Uh, and to the north of it, there is a huge, like, continent-sized forest that uh, a thousand years ago used to be the location of a kingdom called Symborum. 
Nobody knows why or how, but they unleashed some sort of corruption on the land, and this giant forest is the manifestation of the corruption. Um, people venture into the forest because there's old ruins of this old kingdom to be looted, uh, but the forest, well, the forest itself may or may not have an evil consciousness, but it's corrupting. Uh, animals can get turned into monsters, people can be driven mad. Uh, the further north you go, the worse it gets. There are barbarian tribes that live at the south. Uh, oh, and the elves are uh, the elves that live there are honoring an ancient treaty with the people of Symborum that basically gives them permission to murder anybody that disturbs tombs or relics there because they believe there's something that can be woken up. And eh, that's that. That is the setting in a nutshell. Uh, but uh, anyways, where are we at? Master Vernon. Okay, uh, when we start, uh, when we start the game, uh, you all have just arrived in Thistlehold. Uh, there is a, there's a huge main road that, that goes, that cuts straight down the center of the city. Uh, that's, that's somewhat, somewhat crowded. Uh, you, you guys walk in before, uh. Before you guys even get a chance to acquaint yourself with the city or, or, or orient yourself or find out where Master Vernon lives, uh, you suddenly see an, an exciting scene. Uh, through the crowded streets, you can see a little girl uh, running. She is uh, uh, pushing her way through people, running underneath people. Uh, she, she ends up, uh, she, she ends up lo looking behind her. There's a... Uh, there's a group of men that appear to be chasing her uh she uh she bumps head first into nino when she's not looking she ends up falling on her butt right in front of all of you and she uh she grabs onto nino's pants and screams don't let the witch hunter take me and starts screaming as as about a uh uh yeah as a as a group of uh uh a group of six individuals who are running through the crowd sort of stop and form a uh, 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 half circle in front of you. One of them, uh, one of them points. There she is, and you can hear a large. Uh, there's a large crowd of spectators now that are kind of agitating. Some of them are pointing at the woman, screaming things like uh, "abomination." Someone says, "It's her. It's the flare." Uh, yeah. Oh. Hey there. Yeah, I I stand in to kind of protect the little girl. I mean, she's small and doesn't necessarily need a bunch of armed men running after her. Hansel's gonna step in too. All right. Yeah. One of the uh, one of the men says, "Please hand over that girl at once." She's under arrest. What did she do? As you ask that, you can hear people in the in the crowd that have gathered around are still whispering amongst themselves. You can clearly hear someone say, Can it really be her? She skinned all those people? She looks so normal. Another person jumps in and says, That's what's horrid with corruption sickness. It can hide where you least expect it. Uh, after overhearing that, the, uh, the the leader of the group of armed men, he just looks irritated uh, that you haven't immediately turned her over. And he says, in the name of Black Cloak Balimo, give us the heretic or be branded heretics yourself. Yourselves. Is a, is a flayer a type of monster in this world? It is not. You've... Uh, it's just you're just literally talking about someone who's flayed people. Yeah, you know what it means to flay people, but there's no monster that you know of called a called a flare. Uh, when he mentions uh, uh, ball or Balmilo, uh there is a. Uh, I'm gonna have everybody roll. Uh, where's the cunning? Cunning. Everyone's gonna roll cunning, uh, except for Father Ansel. Does not need to roll, Father. Any 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 priest is gonna know who that is, but everyone else can just make a straight up cunning check. Nice. Uh, 
All right, so Father Ansel and the rest of you, you, you are aware who Black Cloak uh, uh, Bomelo is. He is a very famous and very notorious witch hunter. Um, witch hunters are already a zealous bunch, uh, but he, he is considered a zealot even, even amongst them. Um, he's famous for going to any length to root out uh, the, corrupt, the, corrupting for, the corrupting influences of the forest and to grab heretics. He is most most famous for an atrocity he committed where a uh, a very small village insisted that someone he was after was was innocent. Uh, they hid him from the witch hunter. Uh, so the witch hunter uh, had everyone locked in their homes and burnt every structure to the ground, uh, eradicating everyone in the village and the person he was after, in theory. Uh, just to give you an idea of uh, how far he'll go to... Uh, does he have any actual authority here? Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, the he he might not have sway over the local government, depending on how religious they are. But um, it is it is possible he could go back to the black cloaks and tell them you guys are heretics, and you might have you might make enemies uh, enemies of them. Um, How's he stack uh, up next to uh, this, the Church of Prios? What was that? How's he stack up uh, hierarchy wise next to the Church of Prios? Um, he's not he's not a particularly like high ranking member in the the Church of Prios, and not and even though the witch hunters in the Church of Prios they they get along, uh, they have they have many of the same values. They don't always agree on how to conduct business. Uh, at least that's my interpretation from the little bit of the setting that I can remember in terms of the religion. Uh, so yeah, it's you, you would probably get along with most witch hunters, but it, it's uh, it's it, it's it's really up to you uh, if you want to cooperate with them uh, or not. Uh, I will it's mention not. that the the black cloak uh, Balmelo himself is not amongst these these six men. The six men themselves. Um, they themselves don't look like witch hunters. They're just, uh, they're sort of dressed and armed like hired muscle, in your opinion. I'm going to say, do you have a warrant for this girl's arrest? He laughs. He says, a warrant? She's the flayer. She's been murdering people all over the town. Give us the what heretic. What evidence do you have of this? He says, that is none of your concern. None of your business. Hand her over, or Balamo will hear of your treachery. Can I can I run into the alleyway? As an almost like open. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can run off into a nearby uh, alleyway. Okay. The uh, the the uh, the the men take sort of a uh, threatening step forward, and they uh, they draw. They draw their weapons. And the uh, other... Major is going to thump uh, his peacemaker. It's a huge wooden log. And will uh, be huge and hulking. And uh, also take a look at Father Ansel and says, What do you think? These people, your people. My brother, these are not my people per se. But there may be some connection this girl has to these cases. I prefer to see that things do not escalate any further beyond where it already stands. What do you think? The, at this point, the girl cries out. She just says, don't let them take me, they'll burn me. Hey, hey do I know what the higher-ups look like? Like, are they wearing a crown? Do they wear fancy robes? In you can the, make yourself uh, look like the witch hunter that we saw in the the caravan. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you could attempt to uh, uh, disguise yourself uh, to, to look similar to, uh, yeah, the Lester, the witch hunter you've encountered before. Yeah, uh, I'm going to try that out. All right. Go ahead and make your, what is it, Resolute? Oh, is it Resolute? I forget what it is to transform. Uh, this is, this is I just know you've had bad luck with it. 
<laughs> Whoa, come on, Steven. Way to just fucking put him down. Like, <laughs> slam dunk his ass, dude. I, it's like every time, right? He goes in the alleyway for a few moments. He, he just calmly walks back like, didn't work, guys. Just walks out with, like, a Halloween costume your, of equivalent. Your, your enemy's confused, yeah. Um, I swear, he has my Roll20 hacked. Yeah, yeah I don't. I, I, I'm just gonna say, since Frenya doesn't know, I don't know who Bomalo is. So do whatever you want, but I'll stand in the way. Ansel's gonna take a knee next to the girl and uh, put a hand on her shoulder and say, "Be calm, my child. Uh, is there any truth in what these men say? Are you responsible for these atrocious acts of violence?" She says, "No, my my neighbor accused me of witchery." He, in an attempt to lay claim to my hen house. I, I mean, oh my. I, I, I do have some skills in the art of witchcraft, but I, 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 I've never had any dealings with dark powers. Witchcraft, you say? His eyes light up at the mention of witchcraft. He says, don't worry, we'll have you back with your hen soon enough. And he looks back to the rest of the party. All right. Uh, the uh, as for the uh, as for the, uh, the 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 rest of you. The uh, the the other uh, the other men are uh, are inching closer to you, and the one that's been doing all the talking, and he says, "So, what'll it be? Hand her over, or die fighting for this heretic?" I think we should go with the third option. What's that? Why don't we go together to see your uh, your master and discuss the evidence you have against this girl? And uh, from there we can judge whether she's guilty. Yeah, he just says, you have no authority to judge whether or not she's guilty. What does our master care what your opinion is? Perhaps your master may care about the opinion of one of the chosen of the church of, insert the name here since I forgot it, he raises yes. an eyebrow, yes. <laughs> snaps his finger and points, that one. As you guys are, he stands uh, at full height. as you guys are talking, one of the, uh, one of the random members of the, uh, of your opponents clearly gets bored with the conversation, and he says, let's just take her, and he charges forward, this, this prompts an all out melee between everybody so let me just switch to a nice uh map of this random battle map here there we go all right i'm gonna go ahead and throw out your uh just a note for jack uh rager looks uh, like Dick and Stupid, and he tries to talk like that when they are people, but amongst ourselves, he's quite articulate. And why can I not drag this one? Oh, I like that he's got a bit of a facade in play. It's just me can't manage the dumb bolt. Oh, all right. Let me just find uh, some bad guy tokens that I can use here. seem to find the uh, tokens that I used last time. Alright, alright. I'm tired of looking for tokens. I'm just going to use this ridiculous looking thing with the sword here. So, let me just... There we go, got one more. 
All right, so uh, so your your opponents are wearing uh, scale mail. Uh, they have uh, they have an axe in one hand, a shield on the other. Uh, they are dressed in basically uh, black black outfits. Um, yeah, so what we'll do is I'm gonna. I'm gonna drag one up on the roof just so I can use it as a turn marker. Quick and vigilant, right? Yep. Right. So don't worry, Jack, I'll explain how initiative is put into the turn track here in a second. All right, so you're going to put in your initiative. Uh, you're going to put in your uh, whatever your quick score is, and then a decimal point, and you are going to put in your vigilant. But put in your vigilant is a two-digit number. So if your vigilant is 5, it's going to be 0 .05. So if you have 10 quickness and 5 is vigilance, it would be 10.05 is how you would uh, uh, enter, that in, uh, enter that in. And that's the way initiative works in this system. There's no role. Everyone just it always goes uh, at the same time. All right. Also, too, um, even though we are on a gridded battle map, like you might see in Dungeons and Dragons, this game doesn't really use a gridded map. Um, I'm ju I just use the maps for visual reference. Uh, so we don't need to necessarily always measure precise distances when we're moving around the map. And some, some rules are just always in play. Like if you want to move, like there's a tax of opportunity for moving away or moving through people. Um, if you want to move to the other side of someone so that you can flank them, that's an attack of opportunity against you. Uh, whereas in D&D, &D, you could fine tune your movement to get around that. You can't do that here because, again, we're not really on a grid map for combat purposes is just just so you can visualize where everyone is it's more of a theater of the mind kind of a thing gotcha uh, that being said whoops put them in the wrong order all right oh Fenya is really fast i remember that now all right i'm gonna i'm gonna take the one guy here the uh i'm gonna put a blue dot next to one guy that's the dude that's been doing all the talking this is the person who rushed forward to uh to begin the uh, the melee that is happening right now. So, uh, I'll just walk up and stab the guy that's running forward. All right, his defense rating is plus two. Nice, but low damage. All right, alas, the one point of damage will be uh, will be absorbed by his scale mail. And next, and this makes me happy that the next fastest member of the group is the pig. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna have her run up beside me and a, a, attack him as well. I, I do. Didn't she like almost kill a wolf single-handedly last? Yeah, yeah, she pretty much did kill big wolf so let's see let's see what happens here and it's plus two correct yeah not too much damage low rolls damage wise alas all right next we're going to go to uh how, how do you say is it regor or regior so neither it was neither yeah because the, the 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 root of the word is rage so rage or rage or that's right yeah because he 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 supposedly has a bit of a temper which he shows it and he showed it last time when he smattered to a pulp that thing that appeared and he's pretty much annoyed uh cole just just a reminder also, the pig gets experience. Oh, okay, that's that's nice to know. Yeah. I, so. Yeah. 
Okay. Rachel is going to try to twack that annoying guy. Uh, he will actually stay there to keep Father Ansel to the back. Plus two, right? Correct. And why is this not... Ah, there we go. Alright, that'll, oh. uh, that'll get through his armor. And a little bit more. Let me just make sure there is no bomb. Yeah, this is the Berserker damage. You get an extra and... T4 for that, right? Yep. So 11 altogether. All right, you have hit his pain threshold. That means you can either knock him prone or immediately make another free attack against him. I shall twack him again. Hmm. This is going to be very similar to what just happened, isn't it? <laughs> Ow. It's worse. All right. So Rajor just looks at these guys and roars at them and bah! All right, you, you, all. you have sent him back from whence he came. He's laying on the ground beaten to a pulp. Okay. All right. Uh, by the way, can I can I actually move now after I attacked? I totally forgot that. Um, I, I think you can move after you attack. Yeah, I have two actions actually. Yeah, one uh, one movement and one attack. So, what I will do? Uh, interesting. Can I come here? To uh, uh to, oh, engage with this guy over here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm fine with that. That's it. All right, now it's Nino's turn. So would I get flanking if I attack that guy? Yeah, I'll give you flanking against that guy. All right. I'll move up, and uh, flanking gives me advantage, correct? It, it does, which is going to be uh, plus... Is it plus two or plus three? Plus two. Plus two to hit, and then another d4 damage if you hit. So his normal defense is plus two, so you'll get a plus four with the flank against him. Okay. It's hard for me to remember all these rules. I'm reading so many systems at once. Oh, wait. God oh, damn it. I have to add an extra d4. I'll do that in a bit. It's fine. All right, well, that's uh, that's a solid hit. All right, eight damage minus his armor. All right, so that is a uh, that is a bloodied enemy. Were you using right. a dagger? All right, yeah, he's definitely got some holes in him that he didn't have before. All right, it is the wizard's time. Show us that lightning bolt, wizard. Yeah, I'm gonna conjure up a uh, fireball. So this isn't really that kind of game. Although you don't don't you have like a some sort of attack like that? Yeah, fireball. Is yeah, I'm using uh, brimstone cascade. Oh, okay, yeah. That's a good. That's an excellent corruption roll for you. It is. It means you. I'm gonna use it on that that guy that's been wounded. Okay, I'll put a red dot on him just to remind that he's been hurt. Uh, and then I make. I test resolute modified by quick. Is that that's what the arrow means, right? In the book. Yeah, so it's it's going to be a verse. So uh, his quick has no modifier. Okay. All right. This should make a damage roll for this, but I'll just roll it for now. It's a d12. Ten damage. All right. Is he, like, on fire now, or does he just get burnt? He just gets burnt. He's All not right. on fire. I'm going to put a little icon to make to, to represent the smoke coming off of him from uh, the combustion that just happened. Nice. All right. Uh, 
next it is going to be the bad guy's turn. This guy here is going to move to flank Rajor, which will give Rajor an attack of opportunity against him. And let's see what happens. Plus two being his defense. Well, it is a hit. A hit's a hit. Do you still get the d4 a bonus? Yeah, it's uh, it's always on every attack. <laughs> uh, oh, is it a d6 now? Uh, I don't That's know why this is... Uh, uh, okay, so it's a d6 for Berserker and a d4 for Iron Fist. So, okay, I, I have Berserker, Berserker, so it says dealing 1d6 extra damage when fighting in melee, in melee. And the extra 1d4 is from Iron Fist. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of uh, additional damage. So, so 9 damage. 9 total damage. Alright, yeah, he'll, uh, he'll be wounded. Uh, with that said, then, these two guys are going to uh, go after the the ogre. The first one, the one that, is, that just moved to flank you, he's going to try and uh, he's going to try and axe you. Your defensive roll is a minus five now that you are flanked. Yeah, so I basically need to roll a one. A one, Because yeah. my, my, my defense at the moment is minus something already. <laughs> uh, come on. Okay. All right. Six damage is inflicted in the hit. Okay. Uh, with with absorption. Uh, no, S six total damage minus minus what you negated. So. All right. Yep. Okay. So let me. All and right. The, the second guy as well. The second guy who is flanking you is also attacking you. So go ahead and do another. Uh, try to roll that natural one again on your defense. <laughs> It. Ah, what Roll. did I do? I wrote the wrong thing, sorry. That's okay. Alright, it's the same same six damage, so you'll you'll get another uh, another point. Yeah, this nothing but a flesh wound. Uh next this guy here is going to move up and attack Rajor as well. As for the rules, he does not get a flank bonus, so it's only, it's only going to be a minus three on your defense roll. Well, I have impeding and I'm raging, which means it's that's minus uh, uh, minus five. Again, I need the one. Uh, my defense is basically non-existent uh, until I reach to Master Berserker, and I'm also as big as a barn door. All right, this okay. will only be four damage without the flank bonus, so you're okay. And lastly, this guy right here is going to move to try and flank the ogre. This will give you another attack of opportunity against him, because as far as I know, they are they are limitless. These guys need to chill. <laughs> he has a very tough height. <laughs> Barely. A minimum damage. Nice. Uh, well, let's see what Berserker does. Come on. Give me a five. Oh, well. Just nine. Alright, and he is wounded, not enough to hit his pain threshold. He will then attack you. Same thing, you you uh, need a natural one, he'll do six damage. Alright, but your tough hide and armor were uh, more than Dang. sufficient. Uh, next, the, uh, the leader, the boss man of the group. He's going to go down here and uh, engage with the goblin. He is All going right. to try and axe the goblin minus three to defend. I, I axe 
actually get a free attack since I have polearm adept. Anybody who moves into melee, I get an attack against them. First. That's right, that's right. The magic of the polearm. Alright, go ahead and make that free attack then. Plus two is his defense. And polearms are sweet even in this RPG, huh? Yep. Nice. Oh, that's a. Eight damage. That's a big hit. Alright. Alright, yeah, he uh he got wounded on his way in. I'm not gonna bother putting red dots next to everybody anymore because I think everybody except this guy up here is hurt now. Uh but anyways. So Alright, yeah. You give him a nasty wound on his approach. And uh yeah, minus three for your defense to not get axed in return. All right, you're fine. All right, Ansel. So here's how uh, here's how combat will work. It's kind of like D and D. You can get a move action and an attack action. Um, one thing that's different is I I never roll dice as a game master in this session. Every every action that you or an NPC takes is modified by the 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 NPC stats. Uh, so, for example, these guys have a defense rating of plus two. That means when you go to attack, you're gonna roll. Uh, you would roll accurate uh, with a plus two bonus to the stat. Let me look at your character sheet here too, real quick, just to see the way it's filled out. I think it's pretty much all correct. Yep, I think so. All right. You're, but to save me some time, I'm not planning to do a uh, an attack action on this turn. All right, what is the plan? So, uh, Father Ansel uh, looks at the leader and he says, My brother, may Lord... Not Lord. I've got to memorize this guy's name. What's his name? It is... Blah, 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 blah. My brother, may Prios forgive you. And he does a... Uh, a, a Catholic cross, um, which in this world stands for the radiant sun. It's like the star shape. And uh, he used uh, active for leader adept. So additional damage for hits on him. All right. That is, uh, that is effective. He steps in front of the child. All right. Yeah, so I'll say the girl is, the girl is probably clinging to the, the pant leg of Father Ansel right now. All right, uh, Fenya and Fenya's pig. Um, I'll move to try to do get to advantage to flank the leader. All right, uh, he'll get an attack then. Uh, minus three to your defense. See if I whiff it. I did it. All right, so pluck. So plus two bonus to hit and another d4 damage if you do hit. Okay, and I also actually, with my ten experience, I got backstab. So when I'm attacking from advantage, I use discreet for my attacks, and I add an extra d4 of damage if I hit. All right. I love fucking rogue stuff, man. Let's see. Don't forget the d4 from the advantage itself. Okay, so that would be... There's no way surviving this, right? And wait, what's the mod what's his modifier? Minus two? His defense or is minus... his defense is plus two normally, and then you get another plus two for the flank. Alright, so plus four. Yep. Okay. Let's see if this works. Okay, yeah, that's the total damage, because that's a one D ten plus a D eight. And the D ten rolled a five and the D eight rolled a two. Okay. And real quick, with with multiple bonus damage dice. Oh, should they both should they both be individual they, D4s? Yes. I was uh, saying they, they should probably they should be individual. I was gonna ask. Well, I thought maybe you guys knew something I didn't, so I thought oh, maybe they just stack. No, that what? was just me being dumb. We we sure. can we can leave it with that for now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's I, fine. you get a better average if you roll them yeah. separate. But anyway, se seven damage. Seven. Roll one more D4 because you have one D4 from advantage. Second D4 from backstep and a third D4 from leader. Oh, yeah, from from Father Ansel, yeah. So go do another D4 against him. 
お前はもう死んでる。ああ、10 damage。10 damage that will almost hit his pain threshold, but not quite with his armor.、Uh, he is、uh, he is gruesomely wounded, however.、Uh, And now my pig's just gonna try to go in for the, the disembowelment. Pigs going for the coup de grace. All right, yeah. Same thing. Total of. Again, the feeling this probably doesn't do anything halfway. <laughs> so does, is it plus two, or do, does she also get. She doesn't get flanking, does she? The pig gets flanking. So when you flank、oh, someone,、okay. you and a single party member share that advantage. Okay, okay. Okay, and then roll a 1d4. Oh, wait, roll. 2d4, because fl- flanking and Father Ansel. Yeah. So, seven damage. All, all right. Once, once again, the pig has come through and、uh, defeated one of your opponents. The、uh, leader of this group falls to the ground in a heap. Has he been disemboweled? Probably. I'll draw the blood there. All right. <laughs>、uh, next. Oh, next, we've got our rage at it. Rage or. <sighs> Sees what the pig does and says, Yeah, Granola! And he pounds this guy here.、Uh, which guy? I didn't, I didn't see the ping.、Uh, it's the one、uh, that is、uh, this one. Okay. The right. the right one. The easternmost one. Alright, plus two is his defense. And,、uh, yep,、yeah. let's see if that is enough. Wow. All right. So,、oh. uh, six damage, was it?、Uh, it's.、Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I meant. I, meant <laughs> I was like, that doesn't sound right. I, I wasn't looking at the base damage. 18 damage is just so much more than was necessary. Is there anything left of this guy? I don't think he has a head anymore. All right, he has been,、uh, he's been creamed to、he's、the s t r e e t All right,、uh, next is Nino. You are still enjoying a flanking bonus on that opponent. The, the opponent who is bleeding from knife wounds and smoking. Because he was just lit on fire a moment ago. And we all know smoking's the real killer, folks. That's true. All right. Nice. Alright, l so six damage total is going to be enough to、uh, fell this guy as well. Next,、hey. it, is the, uh, it is the wizard. Oh, I'm, I'm just, I started at the map trying to figure out who was still alive, but something about these guys is hard to see. <laughs> Alright, I'll launch a, another fireball at that one. Alright. l Ooh. You're aware too when you when you hit your、uh, when you hit your halfway threshold to corruption or whatever that'll accumulate permanent corruption for you just as a warning. That that threshold is eight. Yeah, and you're you're aware. Ooh, uh, a natural twenty. There's really no critical or failure effect that I know of on uh, spell casting, uh, unless anyone knows otherwise. So you're you're fine. You just missed. I don't miss. I do 1D4, 1D6 damage instead of 1D12. Oh, oh, that's the worst you can do. All right. Yep. It's not like Forbidden Lands where you can fuck up a spell and blow yourself up. <laughs> All right. That was、uh, which guy? Bottom, bottom or top guy? Bottom guy. Bottom guy. All right. Four damage.、Um, I, I'm pretty sure the, 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 the fire damage ignores armor.、Uh, or does it? Does it end? I didn't see anything about that, so I don't know. It's not that spell, it's some of the others, but this one doesn't ignore it. It's、okay. basically the idea is he throws sulfur at it and it eats his,、ah, his okay. armor. That makes sense. And, yeah. In any event, in any event he, he has suffered for it. All right, on the bad guy's turn,、uh, one, of the, uh, one of the two surviving uh, uh, witch hunter henchmen 
He throws his hands up. He says, enough, enough. We yield. You can keep the girl. And that'll cause the uh, that'll cause the other guy to take a step back as well. They still have weapons in hand, uh, but then they just uh, they just look to the rest of you. Um, it's up to you guys if you want to disengage or or not. We can stay in initiative if not. Rachel is just roaring in their faces and pushing them away, but not attacking. Actively. All right. If 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 everyone is willing to accept their uh, their end to the fight, we'll. Uh, We'll end the combat here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. At this point, too, the, uh, the there's like a panic in the crowd. There's people running and uh, screaming in, in different directions. The uh, the one man who ends it he says, "Fine, keep the girl, but just you wait. Bomella will hear of this. He'll hear of this treachery." Rager tries to silence him with his own voice. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, checking all the dead guys' uh, pockets to see if there's anything valuable or any money to pilfer quickly. Sure. Uh, one, two, three, four. Um, each of them has a little bit of uh, chewing root, which is basically chewing tobacco. And uh, amongst all of them, there's 23 shillings. Uh, okay, I'll take the sh shillings. If no one says anything, I'll just silently take them. <laughs> and I'll take the chewing root as well. All right. In fact, I'll take everything. I'll take their clothes. <laughs> I can't. I can't fit that. I'm too small. A oh, bummer. The uh, the I'm two. Only five. The the two winch witch hunters that are left are uh, compelling people in the crowd to. Uh, Help them carry the bodies back uh, to their to their master, which they get a lot of volunteers for. People are happy to help. the uh, The little girl who uh, is still behind Father Ansel. She says, "She says thank you, thank you so much," and then she just runs down the street. I'm gonna catch her she... arm. Yeah, if you want to try to if you want to try to grab her. Before uh, before she runs away, uh, you're gonna make a, a quick plus one. Tight strap, <laughs> not very good. Wow. All right, yeah, you've uh, you've got a hold of her. Wait now, child. There's still much that needs to be clarified and discussed here. If you wouldn't mind joining us for a while. She says, "No, I, I have to hi I have to find a hiding place before before the black cloak comes. He's gonna come for revenge. He's gonna come for me. I need I need to hide." My child, I will guarantee your protection while you are with me at the very least. But my friends here, and he gestures around, as you see, are very capable and good people. At least good at stabbing things. <laughs> How much I'd love to throw you some finger guns when you say that. All right, yeah, she just starts screaming, No, let me go! And she begins flailing in your grip. Having a full-on tantrum. Should we Should we restrain her, people? Should, should we... Uh, is, that, is that kidnapping? Oh, yes. Just punch her in the gut, she'll knock out. <laughs> You haven't prompted me for persuasion, but I've got wait, pretty wait, good wait, persuasion wait. stats. Let's tie her to the pig. But she can't get away. Some characters are less are are are, are not persuadable. Damn uh, plot armor. Damn you, module. Let's tie her to the pig. Uh, Rajor taps uh, taps Fenya on the head and says, "I like your ideas. They're so crazy sometimes." <laughs> Well, she can't get away, and then none of us have to hold on to her. No mind. Hmm. Or if she does, it doesn't matter. She's a stinky pig. To be, to be perfectly honest, that, ki that pig has killed more things than, like, half the group. <laughs> well, 
Uh, but that's why, uh, that's why she gets the honor of holding on to the prisoner. That's a very honored position, right, Kavrula? Uh, if no one else, I'm gonna start tying the girl on to the pig. Alright, she is, uh, she is tied to the back of the pig now. Like Ansel a, sighs deeply. Like, like a hunted deer on the back of a horse. <laughs> Now should we go to to Master Vernon, folks? With a girl tied to a pig. Well, where else? Are, where I mean, we can't leave her alone. I mean, where else are we gonna go? Wasn't that the place we were gonna go to? Maybe he has some answers about this little girl. We all want answers. I'm afraid I can't think of any alternative. Well. If you can't what? think of an alternative, you better go with the options you got. And I'm just gonna start uh, slapping Kavrula on the rump and walking towards wherever I was pointed out that Vernon was. What if we go to the Black Cloaks and try to sort this out? They did attack what? us. We defended ourselves. We're within Should... our rights. Shouldn't that we would be wise. Well... Yes, but do we want, do we want to, we've already made them upset two times in a row. Do we really want to go up to their doorstep or should we try to, you know, get out before they can catch us? I can't see how that would help us. I'm with our friend here. Well, fine, if that's what you say, but I'm not giving them the girl over until there's so, some sort of, some sort of either evidence or something to give up. Agreed, sister. What do you think, Rajor? Well, I don't understand you people sometimes. I it isn't always a very comfortable life, is it? Mm. Maybe I shouldn't have ever left the forest, but then again, sometimes we don't have a choice, do we? And he slowly follows the pig with the kid and shakes his head. She'll be fine. We, She could be in a much worse situation. Are you talking about the pig or the girl? Both. I could be the one riding on Kavrula right now, and I think she'd hate that much more. I think we may all be able to agree, brothers and sisters, that we all suffer. We all suffer together. And he follows and hums a hymnal to himself. Alright. This is a picture of the front gate of the city, by the way. But anyways. Um, Alright, so your, your plan is to seek out the Black Cloak right now, right? See. So, Alright. So he doesn't have a... Uh, specific residence that people know of but he's a, he's rather famous so you you will likely be able to uh to track him down through just just asking asking around um can we just follow where they're dragging the bodies yeah you know what i'll i'll even i'll even allow i'll even allow that we won't even roll for it you you can uh, you can follow them back uh eventually um the uh, the two survivors they uh, they go into a uh, they go into an inn to uh, let their master know that hey the girl's here and there's these guys who have uh, we have fought with um, it doesn't take long uh, the the black cloak himself Balmelo comes out uh, he has more more henchmen with him. Um, including the two survivors, there are now 16 of them, plus Balmelo. Can I try to, 
since he's coming out to meet us, can I kind of sneak into an alley, kind of, to, to, to watch over while the rest of the party engages them? Sure, sure. As you approach, Baumela says, I'm going to assume that what happened between my men and you was nothing more than a simple, innocent misunderstanding. I will absolve you of whatever sins you may have committed. Turn over the girl, or die along with her. Another sigh from Ansel. <laughs> Rachel just goes like a little bit... Uh... And it's like a huge boulder that suddenly leads towards you. Father Ansel and says, and he says silently, uh, quietly, 16. Be careful, Father. He nods. Oh, and, and Matt, your, uh, your corruption from the previous scene will be gone now. I'll consider this a new scene. Awesome. Uh, can I try again uh, to test Resolute to restore some health points? Basically, it's a tip. Uh, yeah, that's just something it. your guy can do with like whenever, right? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. So, do I know what their god looks like, by the way? Like, a, like a accurate. Do you know what the the deity looks like? Yeah, like what they would imagine as their god. I mean, I'm sure there's I'm sure there's imagery of him uh, of him everywhere. Uh, Disappearance yeah. and body. Yeah, fuck y'all guys. I'm out. Are you are you able to look like a specific person? I can look whatever. I can look. He's like not. Because well, because you can remember, it's it's like a more advanced thing to look like a specific person. Otherwise, you can just do like a type of creature. Yeah, but it's like a, a god, right? So you, I, I wouldn't know exactly how it looks like. No one does. So I'm just gonna copy the picture. <laughs> Which god is it? Like the sun god, or is it a different god? Uh the sun god, I think. Oh, like. Do you guys remember the commercials where it's like the Jimmy Dean like breakfast helper and the dude's yes. in the sunshine costume? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this can only go well. Can, can I try transforming into something like their god? Yeah, go ahead and test uh, Resolute. God, dude. <laughs> you have been forsaken by the sun god. Does he turn into a moon? <laughs> oh. Turns the ultimate into a, blasphemy. Turns into a demon or something. Um, That's rough, buddy. But anyways, yeah, the uh, the black cloak can uh, see the, the hesitation uh, amongst all of you. And he says, Your time to decide is running short, gentlemen. The girl or your lives... Hansel speaks up. My brother, we did not come to this town to fight. We did not come here for trouble. We came to resolve this misunderstanding. We'd like to know what proof there is, what evidence has been levied against this poor child, that she should deserve a harsh punishment and subjugation by such scary men and chase through the streets like an animal. All right, for Father Ansel, go ahead and make a persuasion with a minus five penalty. I like to roll oh. luck as a halfling. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Maybe there's a little bit too much insult kind of woven in there. <laughs> He's like, we need proof, you crazy son of a bitch. Uh... But anyways, you uh, speak blasphemy against the church and our order, which you claim to serve with your words. How can I trust your word and the word of your men who attack us on baseless grounds? In view of all these good people, and he gestures to the door and outside. He says, I do not need to present you with any evidence. I do not need to even present you with the accusations against her. You will turn her over or die. At this point, uh, 
he he draws a sword. Uh, the rest of his men draw their their weapons as well. Can I rush from the alleyway and like try to do a backstab at him and like stab Ooh. him through the throat? Ooh. You can try. It'll be hard. He's got a lot. He's got a lot of his men. Uh, a lot of his men are around him. But I tell you what, if you can do. Oh God. If you can do a minus, it'll, it, I'll give you the choice. So you can decide if you want to do it or not. Minus five discreet. I'll let you get close enough to make a surprise attack against him. Uh, it's up to you. Minus five discreet, and then you'll still have to hit him with the attack. Uh, but I'll, I'll consider it advantage if you if you do it. Okay, I'm gonna go for it. All right. Rip, rip, rip the campaign. <laughs> this is where it starts, boys. <laughs> Damn no! <laughs> All right, you see, uh, you see, Fenya the goblin running out. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, perhaps, perhaps it's the angle of attack. Perhaps it's the number of of, of eyes that were watching their master. Perhaps it's the blood curdling battle cry that Fenya let out before launching the ambush. Something has prevented it from succeeding, uh, and an all out melee will. Uh, will erupt. So, we're just gonna go here. I'm gonna do an experiment. If I copy and paste your tokens from the other map... Certainly. Will it make you put yourselves... Can, can you see yourselves on the initiative order? Nope. No. Damn it. Why, why, doesn't it, why isn't it persistent between maps? God damn it, roll 20. That's something isolated to turn order, unfortunately, I think. This is why roll 20 needs more competition. They need motivation to improve. Yeah, dude. Holy. <laughs> Actually, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love roll 20. It's just... I've heard good things about Fantasy Grounds. I'm a, I'm a beta tester for, a, for a, another new platform called Roll. Uh, it looks like a cool platform. It's a horrible name. Because if you try to Google Roll, you're going to get Roll20. I don't know why they named it that. but uh, Yeah, not great SEO. Terrible name. But it looks like a promising platform. Nevertheless, right, I'm going to have you guys just like uh, just like before into your, your, your quickness and then your uh, your, uh, your who's a what's it. Uh, vigilance, that's what I was trying to come up with. All right, so the little girl's still tied to the pig, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you better fucking believe it. All right, I'm gonna <laughs> kind of. I see that I don't believe it. You yeah, you charged in with the pig, didn't you? No, pig is, was with the rest of the party with the girl. I hit off on my own down an alley. <sighs> There is a lot of open space. Oh. And a lot of bogeys. Well, yeah, there's supposed to be 16 guys. Six. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait, boys. Hey, you're quite a cat. Oh, man. This is... It's, uh, it's, oh. Actu it's actually going to be 16, including the guy. Uh, not that... Right, yeah. Not that that makes so you 17, feel... 16. Feel so, 15... Better. 15 regular guys and one more difficult guy. Okay, so Rajor said he can handle 15. You handle the 16. <laughs> That's too much. I don't know why that just reminded me of uh, Princess Bride when they're counting the soldiers. Yeah. The day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shit, we should have brought which, a fucking holocaust scene? cloak. Uh, it's right after they revive uh, uh, Wesley. They're 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 peeking at the gate from cover and they're like forty men and he asks Andre the Giant like how many can you handle and whatever number he comes up with and then they calculate it out and he's like oh at my best I couldn't take that many <laughs> but anyways uh, all right so we got the these guys here let me find the stats for uh, this other guy because he's on a different page.
Hey, does this count as a new scene? This little battle, battle scene right here? Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, from the previous battle, yeah. I, I might have a plan to save us. So. Is it just smashing them into little pieces? <laughs> oh, of course. Yes, combat first. I don't think it's failed you guys yet, right? It honestly hasn't. We actually killed some things that we probably shouldn't have so quickly. Yeah, I'm getting the impression that might be the best route because, like, I we tried talking and it's like both times it's like, uh, uh, no thanks. But well, we kind of already pissed these witch hunter people off when we uh, gave up the two. We're gonna give up the two uh, pathfinders and didn't kill the elves. Yeah. Uh, you know, I guess there's one way to look at it. It's like you're 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 already not the witch hunter's favorite folks anyway, so might as well roll with it. Kill the full map. Uh, All right, let me lead. just uh, let me just look up some of this guy's abilities because I realize I didn't know. Ability. I mean, I'm a five year old goblin. What do I know? It's a it's a tough world. Nobody likes goblins. Nobody likes uh, heretics. And well. It's the whole Inquisition all over again. With yeah. A little bit extra prejudice. All right, so that guy has that ability, which is pretty awesome. Big church politics, lots of fun stuff. Oh, yeah, that's too. And then there's also Ordo Magica and their politics. Yeah. And there's also the real sorcerers and demonologists and necromancer and all the real bad deal. And everything that happens in the monastery of the Black Fires, Friars. It's a beautiful right. world. Give me one second to find an appropriate token for this guy. Nice so, for a fun setting, though. Oh, yeah. Wait right, till you get to see the trolls. Ooh. Can't wait to try to <laughs> talk them out of fighting. All right. My 40k Inquisitor. <laughs> we'll just we'll just pretend just pretend that that figurine is not holding a gun, because the figurine is clearly <laughs> holding a gun. That's so fitting. <laughs> That's good. Oh, is he heavy armored? The uh, the witch hunter is armed with a sword, shield, and scale mail, so uh, not not particularly more armored than uh, the rest of his uh, companions. He just looks a lot more official, wearing the uh, the black witch hunter outfit, several high ranking badges of office. Um, yeah. Anyways, all right, uh, Fenya. Although your ambush has failed. Uh, you do still get to act first. Uh, there is a crowd of people from the alleyway that you uh, you 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 run ran into. By. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll just swing at the guy to the north of me. All right. Uh, plus two. Nice. All right. All right, I'll start. I'll mark which guys are wounded here, because uh, this person, whoops, yeah, uh, definitely, uh, definitely wounded. Uh, next is the pig, and the pig still has the child uh, tied to its back, right? Yeah. What do should should we have? Should we keep the pig out, or should we just throw all abandoned and have the pig go in with the girl on top? Oh, I, I think that... I think it's too late to discuss such tactics. Okay, it's all the, up pig's to just gonna, pig. the pig's just gonna run forward and attack this guy right here. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Attacks, but only one damage. Alright, uh, the pig's actions are gonna give the girl an opportunity to escape. I'm gonna have the pig do strength plus three. That's a strong, her strongest stat. 
All right, yeah, the little girl cannot uh, cannot get away. Next, it is the mighty ogre who could surely take all these people himself. <sighs> yes, but I see one who isn't a person and has the holy might of the emperor. Uh, I mean, uh, of Prius. And I will try to take him on. Okay, question: Can I use any of the uh, any of the rules from the? Oh, okay, you didn't read them yet. Okay. No so I, I still haven't read any of the advanced rules yet, but what did you have in mind? Basically, uh, try to have an, uh, a, a second chance to succeed on my attack, which means that they get a second chance to succeed on, on their on, on their, on on their attack against you? Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, it's going to lead to an interesting string of uh, events here. But yeah, it's basically an all-out attack, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right. Uh, go ahead and uh, roll. Believe it or not, defense plus three. Okay. I... Come on. Attack hits. All right. You must re-roll that attack against the Witch Hunter. Yes, maybe I will crit. Maybe. <laughs> you will crit. Ooh. All right. However, your all-out attack allows you to reroll a miss, right? Uh, uh it's. Uh... <laughs> no, the idea is I, I just need to hit, basically. Uh, so probably actually. Yeah. How does how does it work? Uh, in some cases, if you take even the pariah trait, here is how these things go: the characters get a second chance to succeed. So, if I, uh... yeah, and against and against the witch hunter, you get a second chance to fail. So, uh... all right. So I, I'm I'm fine with, unless unless you know the rules say it otherwise. It sounds like it would just be another reroll. Yeah, because technically yeah. you you failed at this point, so you get another chance to no, succeed. No, the the fail is uh, I, I succeeded with my first attack. Uh, so technically, that's that should be enough the the problem is the problem there's no problem uh, the the advantage that, that he gets is to that he will pr most probably hit me no but he has an ability that allows him to make you re-roll oh he has that that's why you have yes. to re-roll that attack yeah you you re you re-roll any any attack against him uh and you fail but then you re-roll a failure so i just say you re-roll again Okay, so I roll again. I see. And this I third, see, and this see. third, this third result will be what it is. Okay, I got it. I got it. Sorry, too slow here. That's okay. It's a weird string of abilities that you all have. Hey, there and we go. Isn't this the same thing? I rolled before. That is the exact same thing you rolled before. <laughs> it Do you only count the the final damage roll or the first damage roll or what? I will do the final damage roll since since this rolls it all together. Uh, we'll just we'll just whatever the final attack is is what happened. It's uh, eleven damage. All right, eleven damage. Um, hold on a second. All right, uh, that will hit the pain threshold of this enemy. You may knock, uh, so you, your choices are uh, free attack, or you can knock them prone, which will grant advantage to any allies that attack them afterwards. It's up to you, though. Uh, I will I will attack again. Uh, uh, I will attack again, yep. And uh, the, the all-out attack is not on reactions, it's on an attack. So, oh, sorry, that's the wrong thing. So I will need to roll twice and get the if yeah, and one more time plus three, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Woo! <laughs> 
All right. right. Uh, wow. Well. Wow. So, so is he knocked out? The uh, the witch hunter is annihilated, dead on the ground. Uh, you That's guys, one way of saying knocked out. You guys hear uh, you guys hear screams as the uh, as the 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 most famous witch hunter in the land uh, lies dead, beaten to a pulp, in front of the ogre. the uh, The rest of the soldiers will run and scatter at this. Um, each of you roll. Uh, each of you roll straight up vigilant. All right. Those of you made it, you noticed there's a number of town guards that gathered around uh, while this was happening who didn't intervene but thought about it. Uh, upon this, they are uh, they they. They also scatter. They're uh, they're clearly uh, clearly running to the sheriff or ma uh, magister. By the way, they're yelling. A lot of them are screaming about the adventurers who have just murdered the witch hunter. You you do get an uneasy feeling over you that the uh, the sheriff and town guard will be upon you soon, or at least the next time you're recognized. I'm gonna check the witch hunter's pockets to see if there's anything interesting or uh, valuable. Valuable. All right. Uh, the witch hunter who went down easier probably than you expected. Um, there's twelve thaler mm. amongst the witch hunter's possession. Various interrogation. Various interrogation tools, some shackles and chains, and uh, three doses of pixie dust. Uh, which you sly dog. Which is a uh, which is a type of elixir. Oh, like a intense hallucinogenic or something, right? Let's see, pixie dust. I be honest, I kind of forget uh, what it does. I never use it myself. Yeah, it's not like Splenda, something mild like Splenda. You just put in your like coffee or something. That's some real shit. That's something like that'd be used for something in our world, like. Okay, so the way pixie dust works is when you have traveled somewhere, uh, you can sprinkle a dose of this uh, glittering powder uh, behind you, and it perfectly hides your tracks. Okay, I'm gonna take all the pixie dust and the money, and I'm also gonna take some of those shackles. All right. And time the little girl better? No, these are for some personal use. I'll give you a weird look. <laughs> I'm only five. My friends, I think it may be best that we be off to see the man we came here to meet. Master Vernon? That's what I said in the first place, and you guys said to come here just to kill that witch hunter over there. But I won't complain. I'm richer because of it. I'll be honest, I did not anticipate having to kill him. Well, see, you never... Best intentions don't necessarily mean that much. Anyways, I didn't have to kill him. It's on your conscience. Ansel crosses himself. <laughs> Rager is uh, what I'm doing right now. He tries to say something, then goes quiet. Tries to say something again, then goes quiet. And he just goes to Quarula and scratches her behind the, the ears and says, How do you put up with her? <sighs> uh, um, uh, by the way, his, his weapon and shield are just regular. Yeah, just a sword and shield. Mm -hmm. Nothing, nothing all that fancy. The the witch hunter. Uh, yeah, nothing. No, no, like artif. Well, I mean, witch hunters probably wouldn't have mystical artifacts, uh, anyways. But, does he have a, Does he have like a badge on him that signifies he's a witch hunter? Yeah, he's got some badges of of uh, of office uh, on him. In fact, 
badges, uh, uh, mar- markings that suggest he's a, a quite high-ranking uh, member of the Witch Hunters. Uh, Go all stolen valor and take those as well. Sure, sure. Yeah, and anyone that you showed these to that knew anything about Witch Hunters would probably recognize them, because he is probably the most famous, or was the most famous, uh, in the land. Uh, and anyone who's ever had interactions with Witch Hunters before... This was the only way this could have gone. Uh, he, he had no... Um, there's just no reason a witch hunter would ever hold a trial or offer proof to people for accusations. Because why? Why would he? Uh, 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 unless, of course, he doesn't underestimate you like this guy did. Um, all right. And you fuck with the clergy when they're on, uh, they're on the road and they bring their friend who's a giant, powerful ogre. Guess he's... You can't see that coming. It was a good. It was a good first strike. All right. I was very much counting on that. It looks like uh, Lord Prius was with us today, though he truly works in mysterious ways. If this man was his servant, or thought he was. So, are we going to try to stay away from the guards for now? I think that would be prudent. Yeah, it'd probably be smart. You guys are probably a somewhat recognizable group. (laughs) We should start (laughs) heading to Vernon. Yeah, yeah. At least least we got pixie dust for whenever someone's trying to track us. That's true. Which will inevitably happen now. (laughs) You guys going to keep the girl tied to the pig? Yeah. All right. Why, though? What, you know, at this point, we might as well let her go. Do you want me to put the shackles on her? I think Vernon can tell us more. Let's just let her go. This is kind of, like, fucked up. Fine. <laughs> we should probably let her go. I'll just cut the ropes. When Zeus says something. My child, I apologize. We weren't able to keep you safe. We may have even endangered you further by our association. She's scarred for life, dude. <laughs> yeah, she, uh... He hangs his head in shame. She, she just looks at you blankly for a moment and then runs into the city to whatever hiding place you imagine she knows of. Ah, uh, she's fine. She probably has plot armor. Pryo, save us. But all right, yeah, we you guys... save that guy over there. You guys do know where Master Vernon lives. He's in a large two-story manor near the uh, near the edge of town. Uh, Probably the best place to be, anyways. All right. Yeah. You uh, you head over there. Um, like I said, large uh, large two-story building. Uh, a, a, a a huge uh, oak door. A uh, a massive uh, a massive knocker on the front of it that has the uh, the form of like a gargoyle with a knocker in its mouth. And uh, the house is, uh, it's really, uh, it's really quiet. You don't hear the sound of, like, students inside or anything like that. It's just quiet and peaceful. And now we're going to break that peace with a pig. (laughs) Ansel enjoys the moment of peace for a moment and then lets it go, understanding that it wasn't meant to be. What's the guy's name again? Master Vernon. Vernon. So, did you study with him a long time ago when you were in the old land, Bartolo? No, but my master has. Oh. So this one is pretty yeah, old Ver- for a human. You guys know Ver- Vernon's traveled everywhere and has friends everywhere, so... Well, you guys don't personally know him. There's a good chance if you have contacts in Ambry that you know someone who knows him. Um... But anyways, uh, yeah, knocking on the door, uh, after a moment, a, uh, a very pale-looking woman meets you. Um, she says, um, hello, I'm Isbetha, a, a junior tutor. Uh, you, you can see she's noticeably shaken. Her lower lip quivers a little bit as she speaks. You also notice there's no pupils in the background moving around. Normally there's quite a few students at Master... Uh, Vernon's home. But she just kind of stares at you. Is everything alright? 
And she says, uh, no. No, it's not. And she, uh, she has a look of confusion. She says, are you here to see Master Vernon? We are. She, she, uh, she has a sad look on her face and nods. She says, it's best if I just show you. And she, uh, turns around and walks inside. I assume you guys will follow her. Yeah. 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 She uh she heads to the second story. She sort of stares at the ground the whole time. Again, you can't help but notice how empty this place is. Not not only are there not students walking around, but there's nobody here to see the master, which is unusual. Uh, she gets to a, a wooden door, then she turns to face you. She says, "What you're about to witness is horrifying. I've seen it right before you came," and she swings the door open. Before you, you see a room with blood everywhere. You can see the skinned body of a man hanging upside down from the ceiling. His entrails and skin lie ben beneath the body. There is one window open with bloody footprints leading out to the roof. This day just How big are the footprints? Uh, the footprints... Uh... Are they child-sized? <laughs> <laughs> with a little note in blood, thanks for releasing me. No. Uh, no, the the uh, the footprints. Uh, you're guessing uh, an adult man, a barefoot adult man, roughly child sized. <laughs> Anto crosses himself, and starts mumbling a a prayer. Well, that's uh, ever I'm ever ever see. curious. Uh, so, is there is there a body necessarily, or is it just? Yeah, yeah. So, so es Esbetha will be happy to let you guys go in and uh, look around. Though she refuses to enter the room herself. But yeah, in the in the center of the room, there is a skinned body, uh, hanging upside down. Um, it's been disemboweled, and beneath the body that's hanging upside down, you can see uh, the entrails and just a big pile of skin. I'm saying, so, oh, intriguing, and I'm gonna walk up and start inspecting it. Ansel's immediately going to uh, snap out of his prayer and uh, go to uh, lead the poor woman away from the scene. All right. My my child, allow me to brew some tea for you. Will you show me to the kitchens? I'm she... going to search the study for anything that stands out to be interesting or of any value. Sure. And, and as Betha will follow Father, Father Ansel, she'll lead him to the kitchen. She needs any excuse to get away from that room right now. You can tell Same. by... You can tell by her expression that she, uh, she's probably telling the truth in that she has just seen this before you guys uh, arrived. Um, so we'll start with uh, Matt. You said uh, uh, Bartolome is examining like the body, right, or the area around it. Yes. Sure. Uh, All right, yeah, Matt. You notice the uh, the skinned corpse is missing two digits from its left hand. Um, does Does anybody in the group have the uh, medicus ability? I do. All right, go ahead and make a uh, cunning check with uh, yeah, some straight up cunning. Ah. All right. Uh, you're able to determine a, a couple of things. You can see by damage of the neck, it looks like uh, he was strangled very aggressively uh, before being being skinned. Uh, as for uh, as for that, you can't really make anything uh, of the uh, the skinned body and the uh, and the and the organs. Um, Matt, make a uh, actually. Yeah, Matt, make a minus five vigilant check. Oh, so close. So close. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, for, for anybody who is uh, searching the room... Uh, go ahead and make a, a vigilant test. Okay. Any minus? Just straight up. All right. Ooh. All right. 
Rajor. Um, beneath the or on the floor beneath Vernon's desk, you find a uh, you find a ring made out of rusty iron. Uh, the inside of the ring is inscribed, um, although you don't you don't recognize the uh, the language of the inscription uh, whatsoever. You also find a letter uh, on the floor, but it's been stained badly with blood. I'll go ahead and uh, share the uh, bloody note. can try to glean whatever you want off of it. Dear Master Night Bitch. But anyways. So, of the king. While you guys are inside uh, examining the, uh, the crime scene, we'll call it... Uh, we'll go to Father uh, Ansel and uh, Isbetha now. Uh, now drinking tea in the kitchen. Dear sister, how long has it been since this occurred? She says, "Well." Uh, Master Vernon earlier came home. He, he was running some errands. He seemed to be his usual calm self. Uh, he tutored a couple of students and then closed the door to his study. It's his usual routine. Uh, a little while later, I, I heard a loud bang. Uh, I asked about it through the door. Master Vernon answered me, told me not to worry. It was just the window beating on the wind. After that, everything was silent. And then an hour later, I went to his room with wine and biscuits. And that's when I found him. Skinned. Hanging upside down. Uh, that was... That was within the, the past hour. I've just been sitting in my room by the entry hall. I'm, I'm sure no one else has entered. There's a, there's a bell on the front door that... That, that tingles when it's opened. Uh, I'm gonna have uh, Father Father Ansel can make a village vigilant minus one check. Oh, all right. You can sense that uh, Isbetha is probably giving you a very accurate play by play of what happened. Uh, but uh, you also think she's being careful uh, as to exactly what information she reveals. I see. Thank you, dear sister. And I apologize for bringing up such difficult information so soon. Um, were any of the master's uh, pupils uh, here at or near that time. I notice there's no one here at the moment. Uh, go ahead and make a, make a persuasive minus three check. Oof. She says, no, no, after, after his tutoring had ended, he didn't, he didn't see anybody. He always locks himself in his, in his study for some, uh, uh, for some private time before I before I bring him his wine and biscuits. No, he he didn't have any visitors. I see. Well, I'll leave you to your tea for the moment. I'd like to rejoin my colleagues upstairs, and we'll be close by. So if you need something, uh, raise an alarm, and we will be here to help you. Says, of course, mm -hmm. I'll. I'll be here if you need anything else. Thank you, dear sister. Uh, right. Prios be with you. And he stands and he walks upstairs. All right. So after a few moments of searching the office and examining the body, Father Ansel will uh, will walk 
into the room while you guys are probably reading the, the bloody note or examining the ring. Does anybody amongst you have lore master? I do. All right. <laughs> what what level of lore master do you have? Um, five. I'm kidding. There's I, I'm I'm a novice. I was I was I was like I know there's something wrong with the answer, but I was having trouble articulating it. Like that's not how it works in this system. All right. Anyways. Uh, okay. So you are a you are a novice. So you can see. Uh, you can tell that the inscription on the side of the rusty ring is in uh, Elvish, which is rare. It's hardly ever written down. Uh, as for what it says, though, uh, you know what? L Lore Master allows you to make checks to read other languages. It, it says here that you need to be an adept to be able to read it, but I, I tell you what, I'll let you make a minus, uh, a minus three cunning to be able to, to read it. All right, alas, you, you know you know that it's Elvish. Uh, looks like it's a a single word or or phrase, but uh, it's so it's so rare to see Elvish written down that you're just not able to decipher uh, what it says. Oh, it says in another human language. Okay, that's what the novice level says. Ah. But uh, so we're caught up in some more elf stuff. This might but be revenge, I, like with the the two pathfinders. I could I could speak Elvish. I, I... Not exactly though. Think about it. The other one that had a rusty iron bracelet was an elf. She was part of the pact. She had the exact same thing. Remember, the one that we killed before. Well, what, we if, didn't kill... what if he killed one and took it like I did? Do do any of you real quick? Do any of you have alchemy? No, no alchemy amongst no. you. No. Never mind then. Hmm. For some reason, I thought the wizard might have alchemy, but I took lore master instead. Oh, instead of alchemy. Yeah. All right. In that case, so, never mind. Can Matt only read it, or can like everyone read the? I mean, you can look at it, but you, you can look at it can... to know to know that it is the written version of Elvis. You must have at least novice lore master. Oh, so I can't. I won't be able to read it if I know the language. You, uh, you and not. Well, does you? I mean, your character was abandoned as a child, uh, by elves, right? As a baby. As a baby, so yeah. you probably. You probably don't know the language that well, and even if you did, uh, Elvish is so rarely written down uh, that even if you could speak the language, it would still be uh, a challenge to read it, unless you were really uh, familiar with it. All right. Illiterate. All right. Um, yeah, if anybody else... Uh, if anybody who hasn't done like an investigation at the crime scene roll yet wants to, uh, they can try to examine the uh, the body. Alternatively, too, you guys can uh, examine the, the footprints as well. Uh, or, I mean, talk amongst yourselves, too. Uh, I'll I'll look at the footprints. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll check the body to see if anything stands out on the body itself. Sure. We'll start with the uh, we'll start with the uh, the footprints. Um, so the window's ajar. The bloody footprints are leading away from the body. Uh, Matt, make a plus three vigilant test. Success. Got it. You can see that the, uh, the, the windowsill and locking mechanism are completely undamaged, untampered with. Looks like it was opened from the inside. Uh, go ahead and make another test, Matt. Minus five, Vigilant. All right. Uh, climbing out the window and taking a look, you can see that the bloody footprints... Uh, trail out onto the roof. It looks like whoever left them stopped to wipe their feet at one point because they go, uh, 
you can see some bloody bloody rags and the uh the the footprints quickly fade out to obscurity you you don't think you could track them beyond beyond the roof it looks like whoever was here jumped off the roof or jumped to another building uh at one point uh in the meantime um You know what? I'll, I'll let I'll let everybody have a chance to notice this one. Everybody that is in the room now, except for Matt, because I already made him roll for this. Make a minus five vigilant test. Just everybody's in in the room. This is just something you can notice. Hey. Only takes one. Zeus, you get all the good rolls. All right. Uh. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, those of you those of you that made it, something occurs to you. The uh. The pile of skin that has been left beneath the body, um, its uh, its hair is dark, uh, not dark, it's sort of a, a light, sandy blonde. But there's an oil painting nearby which depicts Master Vern with dark, uh, almost greasy black hair. Uh, this prompts you, uh, Nino, to take a uh, closer look at the skin, and you can distinctly see the pointy elf ears. This appears to be a human body, indeed, hanging from the ceiling. In fact, you can confirm by the picture that the body's even missing the same fingers that Master Vernon's missing. Uh, but this skin beneath the body? It did not come from this body. It came from an elf. So, did the elf take off his skin and then take off its own skin and put his skin on? Does anybody yeah, have that, the... that's uh, definitely it. Does anybody have the beast lore ability? I do. Uh, beast lore abom oh, yeah. abominations? It's just beast, beast lore. Ah, right, the way they read it in the book is. All right, um, let's see. In that case, Matt, make a plus three cunning test. Ooh. Oh. All right. Um... Yeah, uh, Bartolom, you, you can remember having heard of, you've never seen it, a, uh, a sorcery ritual called Blood Shrouding, in which a mystic can flay a body and assume its form for a day. Um, but uh, you, you can't say for sure that's oh. what this is, but uh, yeah. Does, does, any, does anybody else have the Medicus ability besides uh, Barletum? Is it just him? Oh, just him? Okay. In that case, never mind. I'm basically going to fill everyone in on all that stuff that I found. The uh, the flaying, the ritual, the fact that the door was unlocked from the inside, the footprints, blood was wiped off and they jumped off. So yeah, basically, Elf or something came in, took, it, took his skin off, and then took their own skin off and put his skin on. I don't know about that. Well, then how do we have a human body in an elf skin? The ritual isn't take off your own skin, I assume. It's flay someone else and take on their appearance. Yeah, as far as you know, the ritual doesn't require you to remove your own skin, just to simply wear someone else's. Although, when you're done, you would discard the old skin. <laughs> Steven, I have a question for you. Yes. This uh, this may or may not be a detail and listed, but uh, for the lock on the door, does it require that a key is inserted to keep it locked, or is it one that you can kind of lock and then remove the key? Uh, oh, for Master Vernon's bedroom door. Yep. Uh, his uh, his bedroom door, interestingly enough, does not have a lock on it. There's a lock on the window going outside. It's just a latch, but there's no lock on his uh, on his door. Gotcha. And of course, Ansa will uh, fill in the rest of the party with uh, the uh, the kind of tapered information that he got from the uh, the assistant downstairs. I hate to press her further, being so frightened already, but it seems she may have withheld some information. I agree. We should speak with her. So does that mean we should threaten her? No. No. Well, I think if we all go back there, isn't that basically a threat? 
since you already asked her questions? No. Okay. Fenya, please, no more time to the pig. At least that. I think enough blood has been shed today. By me and by uh, others, looks like. So yeah, I assume you guys are gonna hang on to the the rusty ring and the bloody letters for now. Yeah, I, I'll keep the ring, uh, and I'll give the, actually the letter to the guy with the letters, Bartolom. The one who can read. <laughs> sure, sure, and just to uh, just to simplify things. I know you had that sexy handout, but in case there's anything you couldn't read on the handout... Oh, that formatting's terrible, whatever. That Those are the parts of the letter you should have been able to read on the handout. Uh, but anyways. Nice. I think you misspelled my bitch, though. <laughs> I uh, legit said my bitch. I could not figure out what else it could be saying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, who knows what kind of relationship they uh, they had. Uh, but anyways, before you guys are going to go back down, you said you were going to talk to Esbetha again? That was the plan? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, Ansel will uh, turn to uh, Bartolom and say, Dear brother, I hate to um, delegate this to you, my friend, but perhaps you could try speaking with her as one of more intellectual, I suppose, um... Standing. Uh, before we do that scene, I am going to uh, call for a restroom break. So uh, yep. let's go do that. I'll be back in a bit. Okay. That's even absolutely normal here. I mean, everybody hates elves. All right, I'm back. Yeah, some good questions, my friend. Yeah. Welcome back. Uh, what? What? What if somebody carrying a uh, carrying? Sorry, somebody wearing that skin. What was under the skin? And remember the letter that was in there. The last time that we met any elves, they were hunting the guys 
who touch who brought out of Davukar a skull with a crown. What would an elf be doing outside of Davokar in here, talking to a person who has a letter uh, in his office? Talking about the skull of the king. And just, just read through one more time the remains of the letter. Oh my god, I did not, I could not read the letter very well, clearly. The actual text is, uh, much... That, that's why I threw the text in there afterwards as well, because... Just to make sure you could see it. I missed, I missed half of those, of that thing. <laughs> I don't know if I'm missing out on some lore details, but uh, yeah, I mean, it sounds pretty bad. Yeah, I'm exactly. Like, I didn't like didn't... all the dots. <laughs> some sort of curse attached to an artifact that uh, the dear master was in. Uh, we should absolutely the presence of the uh, skull of the king. Yes, yeah, cool. Co co coincidentally, a uh, skull-like artifact was mentioned to you in the last. Hmm. What does Anto remember of it? <laughs> so you got you guys never you guys never actually saw it. You just uh, the two people the elves were hunting said they were part of a uh, they were hired on by a bunch of treasure seekers. Uh, they found this uh, skull or this this crown atop the head of an ancient king of Symborum. The crown had fused to the to the head of the king, so they were forced to take the entire skull because they couldn't get the uh, crown off. Then one by one, the uh, treasure hunters started getting murdered, and uh, yeah, that's why the uh, the two people that were part of your caravan they retreated south, not really knowing what was going on, and then uh, some elves showed up and uh, finished them off as well. Actually, you guys ended up killing one of them because he turned into a monster, but. Uh, Killed both of them. That's right. I forget. I forget. <laughs> uh, do we know the name of Night Peach? No, that's not a name that, that would be familiar to, to any of you. Okay. And that isn't like any like elvish vernacular or something, right? That's just like, uh, like Romanized. Is it Romanized? For like English or common? Uh, yeah, uh, that's probably, if, uh, I mean, Night, Night Pitch sounds to you, if it's a, uh, it, it could be an elven name, you don't know, if it's a human, it's probably a, a nickname of some sort. This is just some kinky foreplay, we weren't meant to see this, this is coincidence. It went a little too far, yeah. Yeah. I hate, hate when that happens. No, this is just completely unrelated, this is just a... <laughs> Nah, it's, it's just us who are out of it all. So are we gonna confront Isbetha? We've all, I think we can all agree that I'm not necessarily the best talker, skill-wise and idea-wise. <laughs> you can talk to pigs. Ah, uh, that's pretty good. That's a big skill. I like to talk to pigs. They don't judge me. You know what's great when you're being charged at by a wild boar in the woods? Being able to talk to pigs? That's pretty good. Uh, I'm on the uh, Bartholome or Rhaegar. Alright, so yeah, who is... Who is gonna do what now? Uh, I'm gonna go talk to uh, the girl. Alright, she is... Uh, She's still uh, sipping away at her tea. Yeah, I'm just going to whisper to 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 the wizard, Master Bartolom. Uh, ask her who is not, if she knows who Night Peach is. Uh, 
All right. Ansel's going to do a small right for the uh, mangled corpse mess in the bedroom. Sure. Oh, yeah. uh, those of you that go down, like I said, you find her uh, just sort of s sipping away at her tea and staring off into space. Say, uh, I'm sorry again for your loss. I, uh, I discovered something unusual in the room and I wanted to speak with you further. She says, what, uh, what did you discover? Was, uh, was the master acting strangely, uh, earlier today when you met him? She shakes her head. She says, no, he didn't seem in any way troubled or concerned. He was, he was his usual, usual self. You're sure he didn't have any uh, visitors, such as a uh, an elf. When you uh, when you specifically mention an elf, she looks a little bit horrified. Uh, she she stares down into her tea. She says, "Well, I was never supposed to speak about the elves, but he uh, he did actually have one visitor. Uh, sometime after he'd shut himself in his room, but before I heard that bang." Uh, an elf came to visit. I don't know the elf's name, but I, I've seen her before. Uh, see, Ma Master Vernon, uh, for whatever for whatever reason, perhaps a las lapse in judgment, frequently dealt with the elves. He's a member of their their sect or whatever they call it, and she looks kind of angry. She said, "I knew it would come to this sooner or later." Uh, only treachery can come of dealing with elves. Yes, uh, it is unfortunate that Master Nightpitch was uh, dealing with them. I agree. He says they're, they're just a bunch of unwholesome nature worshippers. Anyone who regularly visits the Temple of Prios should should know better than to ever have to deal with them. So, did one of these elves happen to see him today? She says, yes. After he shut himself in his study, but before I heard the loud bang. Like I said, I've I've seen her before, visiting the master. I, I don't know her name. Do you know what he was trying to accomplish in meeting with them? She, uh... She just shakes her head. She says, I, I, I made it a point not to ever ask about his dealing with the elves. Uh, something to do with uh, the Iron Pact, as they call it. Do you know where we, where any of his belongings or writings might be that de detail some more information? Says, well, any anything that was important to him would be in in his office. Um, but uh, it's. It's possible the uh, the town's Ordo Magica chapter might have something. Uh, it's uh, it's one of the one of the places in town that uh, he frequents. He he gets to use their library. Um, he he travels to town frequently. I mean, there's I suppose there's many places where you might find notes or belongings of his. Did you ever see him holding a skull with a crown made of b uh, bone? She looks weirded out by the question. She says, no, I don't think so. That seems like something you'd be pretty sure of. She says, I, I, I don't know if you're new here or not, but... This this isn't the first murder like this that's happened in town. There's been How many? there's been at least four or five that that the people know about. Uh, same thing. People skinned alive, disemboweled. In fact, this might be why Master Vernon was killed. You see, he's been visiting Captain Marvello of the Town Watch almost every day. 
to talk about the flare, keep up with the killings. He was trying to help investigate what was going on. Uh oh. <laughs> Big uh oh. Um, uh, Ranger will rumble. L little Miss, who, who is Master Nightpitch? Says I, I, I don't recognize that name. Huh. Uh, and something else. Uh, and then he just abandons the ruse. His. Was Master Vernum missing any of his fingers? Uh, she says, yes, uh, he's missing two fingers. He, he lost them as a young man during a expedition into Davacor, as I understand it. Okay, and, and a question for me. Was, was actually everything fresh upstairs? Was the blood like... Uh, very, very earlier this day, something like that. Yeah, everything was pretty fresh up there. Her her timeline of events that that this this murder maybe happened within an hour of you guys, uh, an hour or two, anyways, of you guys getting there is probably about accurate from what you've seen. Okay, so and in this case, in this case, I'll I'll suddenly stand up quickly and uh, say. This happened very soon, and I think we need to very quickly look around, see if we can find any more tracks, and we must look for something that looks like Master Vernum, but isn't. So the, the skin on the ground was missing two fingers, that's what we determined, right? No, no, the body, the corpse was missing two fingers. The skin had elf ears. And blonde hair. Basically, and so we'll rejoin the party at this point. Yeah, ba basically the, the corpse hanging upside down was missing the same fingers that uh, Master Vernon was missing Would to suggest missing, that yeah. that was his corpse. So they cut off the, he cut off the fingers to make it look like his corpse. Oh my god, could, did the cuts look fresh? Like, did the wounds on, his, on the missing fingers look fresh? Could I go back and re-examine that? Yeah, you know what? Um, taking taking a look, uh, it, it does look like the fingers on that body have probably been missing uh, for years. The uh, the bone has long since like smoothed out and healed over. Oh, my brother, what are you investigating here? You can also estimate by the size and build of the corpse that, um, unless it's a really really good forgery. Uh, it probably is indeed Master Vernon hanging upside down, skinned alive. Uh, all you know for sure, though, is the skin beneath him is, is definitely not his. Brother Bartolom, what... I'm telling you, someone stole his skin and left their skin on the ground. If that is so... I... Do you, As I what did you learn from her? Not very much. He was visited by an elf shortly before his death. Yeah. Anything else? At this point, I believe that he is dead, truly. Can we tell if the elf skin on the ground is female or not? Because she, or, or can, can we identify with Isbetha what the, whether the, the elf that had gone in to see Master Vernon had blonde hair or not? Uh, yeah, so from the skin, definitely a, a female elf. As for the, the hair color, it's fairly typical of elves. But, uh, it is enti entirely possible that the skin on the ground is, uh, is that of the, uh, uh, that of the elf that would normally visit him. Is there anywhere that the Master Vernon, uh, visited regularly, someone he met with? On frequent, uh, Brother Bartolom. Yes, the self. We uh, we don't know her name, but anyone Here's... in this town? Uh, the man we just killed, unfortunately. 
Is that so? Wait, uh, no, the man we just killed wasn't the captain. No, Captain. Ca captain Ravello is like the uh, the law in the town. Oh. The witch hunter is an out was an outsider traveling, so... Oh. Okay. Yeah. Are you saying that he met with the, the captain frequently, then? Yes. Is that man not in grave danger now, then? I think we need to go. Maybe. I think so, too. Though I wouldn't want to show up my big, ugly mug with them right now, but... You know, Neither would I. I'm proud of your good, dashing old looks, Rajor. <laughs> Rajor proud. Rajor strong, but Rajor also do smash and splat, and everybody knows. Can, yeah. can we go find out from... Uh... The girl if any of his students were studying that type of like that type of magic that would allow them to ultimately perform that ritual steve so you 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 would know this your uh you, you would know this yourself that that particular type of ritual is not one that the ordo magica would uh would practice that's much more uh like sorcery witchcraft So I do know it's, a it's, little witch girl. Yeah, very, very unlikely that Master Vernon would have ever taught anyone that ritual, and unlikely that his students would uh, would, would would know of it, at least not from him. It's also isn't witchcraft. Just just a note, guys. Witchcraft is not exactly like our witchcraft here that we know. It's it's just the magic of the barbarians. So, yeah, witchcraft isn't automatically considered bad. I mean. Some people yeah. automatically don't like it, but it, it doesn't necessarily mean the person is evil automatically. Technically, my ritual bond with Kavrula is witchcraft. The, the Ordo Magica would, would sort of define witchcraft as a less refined version of their own art. Okay. That's good to know. I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. Now, uh, so uh, uh, witch hunters, priests, and wizards, the, the problem they would have with, with uh, witchcraft is it does lead to... Uh, greater levels of corruption if you uh, if you go too crazy with it, but uh, but yeah, it's not. It doesn't automatically mean like evil or bad guy. The sorcerers are the problem. The, the... It's probably good to mention. Like when that little girl mentioned she knew of the arts of witchcraft, didn't 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 automatically mean she was up to no good. So. Uh, uh, but by this time, actually, Rager is very, uh, uh, looks very uh, nervous and uh, is urging everybody to, to, to either to try to follow to see if he can find some tracks or even go directly to the Marvel guy. She is worried that we don't have much time. I agree with our brother here. Time is pressing, perhaps. Though, I. Uh situation here seems to have grown more complicated. So do we track this beast down ourselves, or find the good old captain? I think if, if we, we find, find the, the captain, captain, we'll find the arrested. beast. Yeah, it's true. We would, we would might be arrested if we find the captain. So if you guys wanted to avoid being recognized by the captain, uh, you know, options would be not, not traveling together. You know, not the, uh, the priest, ogre, goblin, changeling, you know, you fit that description. Or you could send one, yeah. or you could send one person, and you could even go to a whole other level and have uh, Nino transform. Wouldn't have to be anyone specific. Uh, depends on what, what kind of interaction you wanted with the, uh, with the captain. Split the party. Split the party. Man, if we split the party, that's bad for brand image. <laughs> But we also actually, we, I can get Fenya and we can try to check for, for tracks. I mean, That's a really good idea. Let us gummy non-humans. I tell you what, if you, work. if you want to see if there are any tracks that could be followed uh, from the footprints, I'll let, I'll let a single person try it. Whoever is the most vigilant amongst you 
can make a single minus five vigilant check to see if it is possible. I think that's rage or who has huh. what's your vigilant? Yep. Eleven. Cool. Yep. I'm at a seven. I'm at a ten. Yeah, I'm at a ten. Zeus. Oh, say that again, I'm sorry. What's your vigilance? vigilance? A, t a ten. Okay. Let's see if Prius wants this to happen. Ah, it does! It does. <laughs> oh man! Praise the sun! You are indeed able to find little specks of the blood that wasn't uh, wiped off. Uh, the, uh, the killer, uh, Earl, whom you presume to be the killer, the bloody trail, leads across the uh, rooftop um, and uh, seems like acrobatically jumped over to a couple of nearby buildings. You guys do a probably more climbing on top of the buildings rather than jumping. Uh, you're able to find uh, where the owner of the uh, bloody footprints uh, made their descent. Um, it's close to a uh, part of town called Toad's Square. Toad's Square uh, is a really, really busy part of town. There's lots of establishments there, lots of uh, uh, warehouses and merchants. Um, but the, uh, the, the apparent killer climbed down. At this point, though, their footprints are, are lost amongst hundreds of others who are constantly uh, walking around there. Um, you can tell uh, he could have easily uh, continued along the rooftops, uh, but chose this descent. It could mean there's something important near the square. Uh, unfortunately for you, there's, there's just tons and tons of activity and establishments around this square. Is this where an establishment like where the basically chief of police would hang out? It is not. It is not. Toad Square just uh, it's lots of um, lots of merchants and lots of warehouses in uh, in this area, and it's a super super busy part of the city. So, do we want to continue with the plan where the human ish? Uh, members go and talk to the captain and me and Rajor and Kavrula stick around this uh, square and see if we can notice anything. I kind of thought that it was just the two of us that were chasing the tracks. Oh, okay, if it's just the two of us, that's fine. But that, I mean, uh, I mean that, that's what I assume, but I didn't know what the other guys think, so whatever you guys say. That was kind of what I was thinking, too. Okay. Yeah. No, no, that's fine, then. Okay. Oh, do you want to have it like them follow the tracks while the rest of you go and talk to yeah the the guy that was the plan okay sounds good now i'll assume you guys have some predetermined meetup location hey uh, nino you wanna you wanna change into somebody else make us look less conspicuous uh, I could try. all right uh, uh on, on your way to the uh, police uh, station, the town watch, I should say. If Rick you just got to see if he transforms. Yeah, so if you want to just make a, a, a resolute check to try and transform. Hey. Hey. Zeus transforms into an ogre. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. All right. You are uh, you are very non changeling looking at the very least, uh, so you so you guys are it's just gonna be a group of humans walking in as far as they're concerned, right? Mm -hmm. right. I hope so. I'm not even gonna do the dis the deceit check to see through the disguise, just because he's gonna be pretty casual about a group of people. Uh... Yeah, the uh, distinguishing thing about our group was the giant ogre, I think, and probably the goblin and pig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, uh, Otherwise, yeah. <laughs> just look like a bunch of humans. All right, when you guys uh, when you guys walk into the town watch, you can get uh, you can get directed to the captain pretty easily. The majority of the the town watch building is just a giant open barracks with uh, bunks everywhere. Uh, there's a little kitchen area. There's a table. Uh, there's tables all in the center of the room. There's no there's no walls though. It's just a big open building. Like it's a very communal living situation. Um, Captain uh, Marvello, he uh, he's at a desk, uh, writing up some uh, some ledgers. Uh, 
You don't need any kind of special appointment to talk to him. People just send you his way. Uh, he stands up, introduces himself, says, Captain Marvello, uh, is there a crime you wish to report? Yes, we, uh, we bring sad news, unfortunately. My name is, uh, Bartolom. This is Ansel and, um, uh, Nino. The, uh, it appears as though Master Vernon has been killed. The, uh, the, the color drains from Captain Marvello's face a little bit. And he sighs. He says, Master Vernon, how? We went to visit him today, and his assistant told us that he had an, a visitor earlier, and she heard a noise and came in and found his flayed and a set of bloody footprints leaving the building. As well, then. I'm sad to uh, have to inform the public that Master Vernon will have been the fifth victim of the flare. We understand you were meeting with him frequently to discuss. He, uh... He nods. Says, Master Vernon wanted to help solve the crimes. Uh, we, we, we shared witness statements. Uh, there was a series of murders that happened right before the flare murders showed up. I didn't see any connection between them, but uh, Vernon thought they might be connected. Uh, we were compiling information along with corpse examiner Elantro. Uh, unfortunately, have... we, 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 had, we had few leads. Uh, I feel like Master Vernon probably was hiding some things from me. Perhaps he had a lead that he hadn't told anyone about. Yes, and perhaps the killer knew of this. Perhaps the killer thinks he may have shared it with you, and you could be next on his list. Yeah. Let the flare come. I'm ready. To be honest, I'm very surprised that the flare could have gotten anywhere near Master Vernon. Uh, yeah, so about, he about was, that? He was trusting, but uh, he, he was no fool. I have reason to believe the flare may have the ability to take on the appearance of others. He, uh, he uh, scratches his chin. He says, that would be, uh, that'd be very dangerous for everyone involved. Indeed. As a member of the clergy, I can also account under the light of Prios that this is what we have found to be truthful. We also found a letter which details some disturbing information. It says, may I, uh, may I examine the letter? Yeah, I don't see why not. I'll hand it over. All right. Yeah, he, he jots down the, the little bit off of it that can be, uh, that can be read. He allows you to, uh, keep the letters, uh, for your, uh, for yourself after that. But, uh... He says, well, I appreciate you reporting this crime to me and giving me a warning. I'll make sure to stay extra vigilant, keep guards around me, just in case. That is prudent. I heard a uh, rumor of a, a little girl being involved as a suspect in in the, uh, the, the flayings. Have you heard of that? There's a, a little girl as a suspect in the flings, not that's been reported to me. The, uh, the brutality of the slings seem uh, beyond that of what a little girl could do. But then again, if it's a shapeshifter, who knows? I would tend to agree with you. Have there been any unusual visitors to town as of late? In the last few weeks, we, uh, we... We are rather recently arrived ourselves. He, uh... He shakes his head and he says, We get visitors coming in and out at all times. 
to be honest, what I think would be most prudent right now, I might dispatch some guards. If uh, this letter was meant for Night Pitch, then the killer has Night Pitch's name. You know of that name. <laughs> the mayor? Of course I know him. Oh. Mayor Lasso for Night Pitch. Uh, uh, no surprise to me that he would have a correspondence with Master Vernon. Is this a common is this common knowledge, if forgive my interruption, in this town? The mayor's name? This is uh yeah, of course. He's been uh, mayor of this town for some time. Uh oh why why uh huh. Uh oh And how unusual. We brought the name, we brought his name up to uh to one of Master Vernon's students and she had no idea who that was. That's, well, that would be that would be strange. I suppose if she was new in town like you, maybe she wouldn't have recognized the name, but uh, anyone who's been here for any amount of time should know of the mayor at least. I should think so. It may be worth sending someone to check in on the poor, uh, the girl who is now keeping vigil over the scene at the mansion. If you have meant to spare, of course. I'll dispatch some guards over to... Oh, I don't know, did you guys specifically tell him that it was at his residence? Uh, yeah. If not, I assume you would. So, yes, I'll dispatch some guards over here. I'll have her questions. We'll bring the body back over so that uh, Examiner Elantra can uh, put it with the rest. This Examiner, uh, is she someone available to speak? Elantra? Uh, uh, Elantra is available to speak. Um, I'm gonna warn you, the uh, the murders of late have weighed uh, rather heavily on that elderly drunkard. I see. I, uh, I'm curious, what is your opinion of the witch hunter in town? <laughs> I, uh, I don't know, don't know much about him personally. He's got quite a harsh reputation. It's a bad sign for all of us that he was here, although, as I understand, he got into some sort of scuffle outside of an inn. Uh, was killed along with his men. I will, I will be honest with you. We were, we were involved in that. He, uh, he raises an eyebrow. And he says, do go on. Him and his men were attempting to accost a young girl and execute her on the spot. We tried to plead with them and they attacked us. We defended ourselves. Matt, make a uh, straight up persuasion check. <laughs> oh. Finally says, well, I appreciate you coming to me with that information. I tell you what, uh, we'd appreciate any uh, assistance or insight you might have on these flare killings. Since you're associates of Master Vernon, I, I assume you're a knowledgeable bunch. We'll, uh, we'll revisit the death of this witch hunter another time. I, uh, we appreciate your understanding. We will do all that we can to bring him to justice. Says, listen, I'll uh, I'll dispatch my my guards to the mayor, to Master Vernon's home. Uh, why don't I arrange a, a meeting as soon as I can between uh, yourselves and the corpse examiner? I would be prudent. 
All right. Yeah, he um, he takes some time, gets groups of guards together, uh, explains them the uh, the situation, and uh, yeah, Christ averted. Well done. You guys uh, within within an hour, you guys will have an audience with the. Uh, uh, with the corpse examiner. The corpse examiner's building is just is adjacent to the town watch. Uh, he is a... Uh, uh, Elantro is an elderly man. Uh, he's clearly drunk by the way he's walking when you when you meet him. Um, he also has a, uh, a, a young assistant, a girl of uh, maybe 16, that he just makes do everything. She carries things, takes notes for him. Uh, Theoretically assists him in his uh, in his autopsy, but uh, yeah. Should we meet back up with the rest of the the wild things out tracking and let them know, hey, you're not gonna get shot in the street now. Yeah, you definitely you have time to meet up with them before uh, before visiting the uh, corpse examiner if you want to do that for sure. We bring glad, glad tidings. You will not be shot in the street. That's nice. I, uh, joked the captain for information about well, his opinion about the, uh, the witch hunter, and if he had heard about the little girl and he hadn't, and didn't have a high opinion of him, so... I simply came clean that we were involved and told him what happened. And he's agreed to revisit the the incident at a later time after we've solved the murders brothers you've done well under the eyes of insert god's name here prius <laughs> prius you can also refer to him as the sun god yeah you mean the only god yeah of course of course there used to be others but Alrighty. It's a lot of favor. Should we get on to this meeting with this corpse guy? Uh, did you learn anything else from the mayor? From the, from the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. we'll, just, we'll just share everything we learned. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Okay. I think it might be a good idea to ask around in that, um, or, well, assuming you guys shared whatever it is you found. But basically nothing, yeah. Yeah, what I don't do? think we really found anything. Maybe we should ask around in that area where the tracks were if anyone has seen Master Vernon. Uh, actually, yeah, sorry, I totally forgot about that. So, Steve, I, I wanted to, to go around uh, a few of the establishments uh actually asking for uh for master normal <laughs> vernon 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 yeah sorry sure I, I tell you what make a uh, make a plus uh make a plus three vigilant check as you're asking around can, can i go with him and roll the same thing yeah yeah because you were there when when this would have been taking place Succeed. All right, you you do you do encounter a uh, merchant merchant who is familiar with Master Vernon. He just tells you casually that not long ago, uh, yeah, he did see Master Vernon walk by in front of uh, in front of his shop, uh, but that's it. He just knows he saw him walk by, or is at least pretty sure. Okay. So yeah, we'll just share with the rest of the party that there's definitely someone that looks like Vernon walking around that people have been seeing, but we don't know where he is. We have confirmation. <clears throat> off to Elantro. Yeah, off to the corpse guy, I guess. All right, uh, yeah. The, uh, the, the drunk old man, Elantro, being held steady by his young assistant. And, 
he says, well, we, uh, we've examined the four bodies of the flare, made notes, preserved them as much as we can, and, uh, we also have, uh, we also have some witness statements to, to match up with them. I, I've done very thorough examinations of, of all of them, uh, skinned alive, disemboweled, but you're, uh, you're welcome to take a look yourself. I'm going to gesture towards the mage who has, uh, medical talents. All right, the, uh, as they bring out the, uh, the, the, the first, uh, victim for you, uh, the, the assistant does all the talking, the young girl. And she's, uh, she's reading from some, uh, uh, some notes they've taken. She says, this is victim number one, uh, Garrick. Uh, he's a trapper by trade. Uh, we found him by Toad Square, north side of the beacon, uh, six, six days ago. And, uh, yeah, you can see a, uh, a skinned man with a pile of skin just set next to him and, uh, disemboweled. Did you notice anything unusual about the skin compared to the body? Does it seem like maybe it doesn't go with his body? She gives you a weird look, and she goes, I guess that didn't occur to us. If it's not his skin, then where is his skin? I, uh, I've heard of a an arcane ritual that would allow one to skin a victim and actually wear the skin themselves and that the skin you're finding may be the skin that they've shed when they finished the ritual that they had completed previously and then donned this new skin. She says, well, I, I don't really know. You're welcome to examine the, uh, the four flare bodies. Um, Master Vernon himself was in here a few times to take a look at them, but he examined them alone, never told us anything of his findings. I'll take a look. I imagine some of them are pretty decayed at this point. But, uh, all right. Yeah, through various, like, spices and salts, they've tried to preserve them, but yeah, they, they're, they're fairly uh, decayed. Uh, so, I'll just go through them really quick, and you can you, you guys can examine them. Uh, so, victim number one, Garrick, a trapper by Toad Square. Uh, north side of the beacon, which, to be honest... Uh, hang on a second. Hold on one second here. I kind of forgot what the beacon was, so now I gotta read about it. It's that thing on the picture. That that super tall tower in the background. Yeah, it's a great uh, pillar of uh, that has. A, it's a kind of like a lighthouse. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm reading about it now. So, uh, so the, uh, the town of Thistlehorn and all of its locations are described in the core book if you want to look up the, the map or read about any of it. Yeah, the beacon, it's, it's just a super tall tower, basically, with kind of a cool little history. But anyways, that, that doesn't matter. Um, so let's see. Uh, victim number two, Len, a treasure hunter, found in a shed opposite the Salons of, uh, Salons of Semborum. That was four days ago. Uh, victim number three, Shonda, a barmaid at the Rose Garden. She was found in her home by the North Gate two days ago. Victim number four, uh, Teoman, a chimney sweep in the uh, backyard hen house near, ba near Master Vernon's house. Uh, this was the same day that uh, Vernon was killed. This was today but early in the morning. 
Um, Can we hit the timeline again? Sorry. Sure. So, Garrick the Trapper towed square six days ago. Lynn Treasure Hunter, uh, four days ago. Shonda the Barmaid, two days ago. Tiamin the uh, Chimney Sweep, uh, earlier the same day that uh, Vernon has been has been killed. So they are all two days apart until today. Vernon is the anomaly in that regard sure and 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 examining anybody with the medical medicaid whatever it's called uh go ahead and uh go ahead and make a uh a, a straight up vigilant check as you guys are examining this this examination will take some time but uh yeah so basically I need a vigilant check from Barlow. Straight not up. a uh, not a cunning check. Oh, you know what? Actually, hang on. You are you are correct. It should be cunning. All right. All right. You notice uh, you notice a couple things that these have in common. Um, there are some wounds on their body that um, maybe you didn't notice on uh, Vernum, and maybe you'll see soon because theoretically his body's on the way here. But uh, you realize that uh, all of the uh, all of the victims are uh, they are all missing the uh, adrenal, thyroid, and pineal glands. They've all been very carefully removed. Uh, could have easily removed these without skinning the entire body, and yet uh, there, there they are. Um, as far as you, as far as you know, those glands, they don't have anything to do. If the uh, if the blood shrouding ritual is indeed what's happening here, where you wear someone's skin. Those glands shouldn't have anything, uh, anything to do with that. You don't know why someone would be removing uh, those those specific glands, but uh, yeah, they've all had those. Also, you you can confirm through very, uh, very careful examination that uh, indeed. Uh, hold on a second. Yes, victim number one. It is indeed victim two's skin. Uh, next to it, victim two has victim three skin. Victim three has victim four skin. And uh, victim uh, victim four has uh, let's see. Sorry, I had to read this real quick. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Victim four has the skin that you uh, assume. Uh, Try to think. Of Belongs to Shonda. Victim three. Actually, uh, victim. Uh, hang on. How, how should I put this? So the way they, they wrote, the way they wrote it is uh, confusing. Uh, okay. Uh, Garrick, uh, watch, Garrick has lead skin. Len has Shonda's skin. Shonda has Teoman's skin. What? Yeah, what? That's totally backwards. What? <laughs> Teoman. From Teoman. That That's the servant, right? Sense. Or is that a character we haven't met? No, that's the last one. I wasn't sure if I just like... It's like, oh yeah, that sounds like Teoman or something. I don't know. So I just want to make sure I, I just want to make sure I get this right because I've confused myself reading it, but I think I'm right. It's... <laughs> so, Len somehow has Shonda's skin. Uh, yeah. In fact, uh, yeah. Victim, victim number two, who was killed four days ago, 
has Shonda's skin, who was killed two days ago. How is that? I, I, let me, you know, I, I, I see why. <laughs> I see why the you know, I, two days before she died. I see why. Incredible. I see, I see why this is confused. Let me read, let me read this one more time here. He's a reverse time traveler. Or we missed something very. Okay. Yes. In indeed. The skin by victim one, Garrick, clearly belongs to Len, victim two. Uh, the skin that is with victim two clearly belongs to Shonda, victim three. Uh, the skin uh -huh. next to Shonda clearly belongs to to Tomen the uh, Chimney Sweep, victim four. Um, and... Um. Uh, yeah, so the, the skin for victim four belongs to someone else. Not Vernon. It's not Master Vernon's uh, skin. So you can conclude that the skins next to the bodies uh, belong uh, belong to previous victims. Consequently, the first victim, victim one, Garrick. Uh, could not have been the first victim. There must be another skin body somewhere in town. Yeah. Well, no, they, they belong to future victims. Well, this was at least the order that they discovered them, not necessarily the order that the events took place. Though I am worried by these discoveries with the missing organs. Well, I'm not a man of medicine, um, Did you say adrenal, thyroid, and pineal? Yep. Yes. I've heard from some colleagues in the past that some of these uh, are required for motor function. Uh, speaking, speech. And it unsettles me deeply. Uh, if you guys... Uh... If you guys want to, you can examine uh, uh, the uh, the witness statements that were gathered uh, along with these. So I'll just. What should we should we roll for that? You don't need to. He's got. Uh, he will just. He will just provide them to you. I'm gonna go ahead and put them in uh, Discord here. And he turns to the girl and says, My child, might you have a, a cork board of some sort or uh, a teaching board on on wheels we may borrow? Yeah, sure, they can, they can give you something like that. <laughs> and pieces of string and tacks. Uh... Many. She does, uh, she does mention, she says the... The, the the corpse examiner has some more journals as well, but at that statement, the uh, the drunken examiner says, "No, no, no, no. My uh, my other journals are are private for the captain's eyes and mine only. Uh, you, you should have everything you need to draw conclusions from the, these other victims." I am completely and utterly baffled. Oh, you know what? Okay, hang on. I did. I did. Screw, I did. I did misread the the skin body thing. I knew I was mis. I was misreading the way the way it was written down was confusing. So let me. It's gonna work the way you think it works, but let me. Uh, okay. Let I me, was like, let me, no, no. Len skin is by Garrick, and then he went and killed Len. So the, pro the problem what? is, I, I can't simply copy and paste it to you because there's, there's yeah, yeah, information, it's okay. but it, it's 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 written out in such a way that it 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 caused my brain to just short circuit. That's why I was struggling. Okay, all right, all right. So, let me... so Gar the skin next to Garrick is the one that we don't know uh, whose skin it is. 
All right, so so victim victim. Uh, hang on a second. Okay, so so victim number one, Garrick the Trapper. Uh, this is actually Garrick's skin, but this is actually the body of Len, victim two. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So, 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 so next to Lynn's body is Garrick's skin. So, no. so victim two is also misidentified. It's it's Lynn's skin, but it's actually the body of Shonda. Uh, okay. Victim okay. victim three is the skin of Shonda, but the body of Tailman. And then victim okay. victim four is the skin of Tailman. Uh, but the uh, the body, uh, uh, upon closer examination, we clearly clearly the body of an elf. Okay, so so we don't so the first body is not Garrick's body; it's just his skin that's there, and they identified it as his body by the skin they identified. Okay. It, but that's clearly, okay. but it's clearly Len, and so yeah. So this elf body probably matches up to the skin we found in Master Vernon. Yeah, you're guessing this is probably the elf that that skin came from. Right, I'm glad. I'm glad. I, I'm glad I worked that out because I was like, I know it doesn't make sense, but it's it's written in such a weird way. Yeah, I was. I was puzzled. I, I have absolutely no idea what's going on right. anymore. It makes not, but now now you can see the the, the, the progression. progression. So so the skins so the skins next to each body belong to the previous uh, victim. You know that there must be another skinned body somewhere, and you know that the the last. Uh, that last victim there was an elf, which would have likely provided the, the skin. But anyway, so, sorry. Let's go. Let's go back. Uh, back back to the game. Uh, yeah. Mystery solved, boys. Okay. Yeah. Toad the. So. We saw Vernon going to Toad Square today the first victim was found next to toad square what is on toad square what do we know about that it's just a really busy part of the city uh you guys wouldn't know offhand uh why yeah so, so uh, basically i would ask uh, i would ask actually these guys here who seem to be quite local Uh, especially the, the 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 lady, the girl seems quite uh, quite savvy. But uh, I'm sorry, what was the last thing you said? I cut out for me for a second. Yeah, she seems quite smart. Oh, the assistant so, uh, girl. She anything to add. Yeah, she uh, she she, she just kind of goes on to say she says. Master Vernon actually thought that these flare murders might be connected to some other murders uh, that happened beforehand. They they weren't they weren't the same, and we uh, we don't have the bodies anymore. But uh, he he suspected they were connected. He he didn't really explain how. What other murders? She says, well, th there were these two other bodies. Uh, I can't really say that an examination was done. Uh, they were ripped into little pieces. We can't even tell you race or sex. Uh, but we think they were killed uh, simultaneously uh, in, uh, in an alleyway. That was, uh, that was nine days ago. Uh, the alley was in Toad Square. Uh, we we even tracked the uh, the guards could even track the murderer over the rooftops, but uh, we lost the trail. Could one, of, could one of those bodies have been Garrick's body if they were trying to get if that was the start of the trail of skin taking? She shrugs. She's I I I don't really know. Um, there are some witness statements, but. Uh, they're uh, they're in Elantra's personal notes. We could 
try to... I, I don't know, this is just shot in the dark, we could try to track the last, the TMN, his last uh, things he did and the last things people saw him doing, because whoever was wearing his skin would have... Uh, I guess that's, I mean, would have killed this elf, but I don't know if anyone would have saw that, or if that necessarily leads us to anything. She speaks up and she says, I know Master Vern was attempting to use some sort of divination to help identify the murderer. I don't know if he was successful or, or whatever came of that. He just told us he was working on it. ask is betha about that is, is she on her way with the guards yeah you got if you guys wait a little while uh master vernon's body will come back is betha will come back with the guards examining Ma master uh vernon's body you can um uh you can conclude that he is indeed missing those same glands uh as the uh as the other other victims uh, hey, hey, is Betha? Says, uh, how, long, how long have you been in this town? She says, uh, I, 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 I guess I've been in the town for a couple of weeks now. Uh, I, I, I was an assistant of, I was an assistant of Master Vernon's, uh, in the past, and, uh, when his previous assistant retired, he... He called for me to travel here. Curious, and you don't know who the mayor is? Says, uh, I've never really been much into politics. Mayor Nightpitch, you don't know that name? She just shrugs. Nice her answer. That's her answer. She just shrugs when you say Mayor Night Pitch. I mean, just the, from the conversation, does it seem like she's being earnest or not? Oh, yeah. You know what? Uh, make, a, uh, make a plus three vigilant check. Yeah, you, you, you can't be certain, but uh, by, by talking to her, it, it is possible that she truly is so sheltered. She might not know anything about the town. You you do get the impression by her uh, lack of pigmentation that she never leaves the uh, master's house. Or is she a vampire? Oh, spooky! And so we'll turn to the assistant of. You, you better hope she's not the, a vampire because uh, they're brutal in this game. But anyways, <laughs> uh, uh, we we've not we've seen nothing uh, horrific so far that our ogre can destroy That's in one hit. That's true. You might. <laughs> uh, yeah, he'll turn to the uh, assistant and ask, uh, My child, uh, who else was aware of the involvement of the good master in this investigation? She says, well, uh, like I said, he he talked to the captain of the guard regularly. They they were working hand in hand to investigate it. He didn't mention it to, to any of his students, uh, but... He was making use of the ritual chamber at the Tower of the Ordo Magica. Uh, I, I assumed he was using some sort of uh, divination or oracle ritual to try and figure out who the killer was. He didn't tell me if there were any results from that. And which assistant answered that? Was that the uh, coroner's assistant or was that the assistant of the master? That was uh, that was the assistant of the master, is uh, as Betha, who I assumed you were talking to. Oh, I'm to ask the uh, the other girl, but that's still useful. Either way, if if you ask the other girl, she'll just she'll give you a similar similar answer. She knows that uh, he was working hand in hand with uh, the captain, and uh, she knows that he was attempting divination. She doesn't necessarily specifically know that he was doing it at the Tower of the Ordo Magica. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Yeah. I, I want to walk out. I want to try changing my form into an elf. Okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Classic. Why does he turn into a snow? 
it might be for the better. He walks back um, into the he walks into the barracks as an elf gets murdered immediately. Is is Betha, do you know do you know of this divination ritual and, and how to complete it or see what his results would have been if he had made them? She says, I, I, I don't know much of uh, rituals myself, but there's, there's many that the wizards uh, who are trained in such matters can, can use. Um, as for any results, I, he may have written them down somewhere, may have discussed them with his peers. I don't know anything of it, though. Do you know any of his students or other um, wizards in town that might be able to cast such a ritual? So, um, he has, uh, he has dozens of students. It's possible they would have been, uh, trained in those rituals. The, uh, the tower at the Ordo Magica, though, they have a, uh, they have a particularly well-equipped ritual chamber. I doubt his students would have gotten in there. They're, they're, they're a little picky as to who they let in. So they perhaps a master of the magic? She says, oh, of course, Master Vernon could get in there whenever he wanted. Well, at least Audibly, Ansel says, uh-oh. I think it's time we pay okay. that area. Visit? Yeah, the Ordo Magic. Yeah. I agree. Did we, did we actually look at the, at the journals? Of the uh, uh, of uh, Lantro uh, from the first murder, there were two bodies that were found near Toad Square, right? Yeah, you didn't actually see his uh, his other journals. He was resistant to show them to you, but you could attempt to talk him into it if you want. Uh, the the ogre is actually just going to uh, approach Father Ansel and say, uh, Father. We should take a look at the journals. Where everything started might have some clues that, he, that the examiner missed. I agree. I, I may have forgotten already. Is that something that the uh, coroner is trying to hide from us at the moment? He, he just said that his personal journals are uh, uh, like off limits. So yeah, he didn't want to share them with you because there's sensitive information in them, but you could always try to persuade him. Man, if only we had someone good at persuasion. Or intimidate him. Or intimidate him. Ansel turns to the coroner. <laughs> good brother, under the light of the sun, I beseech you, please, aid us in our investigation to rid this wonderful town of this terrible blight. Save the citizens from such catastrophe and gestures to the corpses all over the tables. Make a uh, plus three persuasion. Oh, ha, ha. Beer. He seems like the type that like that. <laughs> I have no spirits on me. I'm a spiritual man. All right, he says... Well, there wasn't much to examine. Uh, as we said before, they were uh, they were torn to shreds. But here, you can see the the victim statements. Or not victims. Obviously, they don't have the victim statements. You can see the witness statements that we, uh, <laughs> that we found. Dear diary, today I was killed to death. <laughs> like I'm currently being in the most gruesome fashion. All right. So he will mention to you in the note that the, these two murders. They never saw any connection with what was happening with the uh, with that of the flares however um master vernon seemed really interested in them and seemed to think they were connected but he never explained them why these are your two uh additional statements now these two murders happened nine days ago and they were they were simultaneous uh So nine days ago, the two definitely saw some sort of abomination creature, 
and all the all the other uh, uh, victim statement or witness statements from the the flay the flayer murders. All they the main thing they observed was a terrible terrible smell whenever they found the bodies that they thought were pieces of meat. Yeah, and uh, and from the from the notes of the remains, which you guys don't have access to anymore. Uh, it doesn't seem like their their skin could have been taken. Uh, it seems like their skin was just shredded up like the rest of their body. Okay. Can we assume that Bartholom was with us when uh, whatever happened to Uldo's friend happened? Uh, that was uh, Balon. When we, when we uh, were doing the stuff with the Pathfinders. Yeah. So basically, one of the Pathfinders uh, actually died, and out of the dead body, an abomination ripped itself out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we were. We were in the wagon circle that at was, that point. That was in the midst so. of the camp, so Barlatin would have probably witnessed all of that. Yeah. So, what would he think with his medical knowledge then? Because reading these abominations, when they only exist in Davokar, uh, we remember that this was a huge beast, and reading the letter, Speaking that everything is connected. These things, they didn't have any skin, did they? No. That is the thing that we fought. Yeah, the thing, all like the thing you fought, the thing you fought tore itself from the, uh, from the flesh of the previous victim. Yeah, it was just covered in, in muscle and sinew. Ansel helps uh, Rajor move the uh, pins around on the cork board. <laughs> yeah, and where else did we hear about the hen house today? A uh, poor child. And another thing, there were two bodies that were ripped to pieces, like the one that we saw in the mountains. Could it be that there are two killers? <laughs> <laughs> Ansel uh... crosses himself. <laughs> uh, um, there is one more thing that, that worries me. Why, again, why did Master Vernon wanted to speak with Night Pitch? The skull of the king was shown to you, he writes. Where is that skull now? I mean, we burned it and left it, right? No, 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 we burned, we burned the thing. We burned the but... head of that guy, but... They just told us the story about the real skull that they had taken. Yeah, you guys you guys never found the crown with the skull. So Night Pitch has seen it, so does that mean we should go and question Night Pitch? Uh question He might the be mayor the town. next one to die or the next one to turn into an abomination. Yeah, That's well just... Yeah. You appear to have escaped its destructive powers. Maybe you never held it. Uh... Hmm. Well, then maybe we need to go to go to him to see. Well, because this obviously this letter was sent to Night Pitch, but Night Pitch doesn't have this letter right now. 
Vernon had the letter when we found it, so somehow it had to have gotten gotten to him, but either it was never delivered or it, there's there's something that's can be questioned from Night Pitch. Hmm. I think meeting with him is our next priority. Yeah. Should we get the and maybe captain? go to the tower? Yeah, to have him set up something. Yeah. It sounds like a wise decision. All right, so you're heading to the uh, to the mayor. That's the plan. Take that as a yes. All right. Sounds so, like it, right? Yeah, uh, the mayor has a uh, beautiful palace near the uh, near the center of the city. It is uh, it is well guarded. Uh, a couple of guards uh, stand at the doors, uh, the gate, the outermost gate, even not even the palace itself. Stand at the outermost gate when you approach them. Uh, they just very formally ask you to state your business. We're here to talk to the mayor on authority of the captain of the guard. It says, I'm afraid I've not been informed of such a meeting. The mayor is a very busy individual. Can I ask, in, in what regards is this to? To the six murders in the past ten days. Also, we bring grave news about Master Vernon. He says, we've had, uh... We must have had 50 or 60 citizens already come up trying to give us tips about the murders. Why are yours so We're, different? And what we've have actually we... investigated the bodies. I'll have the, uh, the, the most persuasive amongst you can, can roll persuasion. <laughs> yeah. My, my brothers, as a clergy under the light of the sun, <laughs> I was one ordained. I can attest to the words of these good people. This is just a straight roll, correct? Yep. Fine. Uh, and you go back to the captain. He says, "Here's what I'll do for you. I will pass your message along to the inside, and by the morning." I will, uh, I will know when and if the mayor wishes to meet with you. Until then, I cannot leave my post. Like I said, come back tomorrow. I'll have an answer for you. But my Good goodness, sir, another man could die in that time. He just says, yes, yes, this sounds more like a matter for the captain of the guards. Well, we talked to him, and he, and he told us to come here. Let's go get the captain. We will return, good brother. Be at peace, under the light of the sun. Okay. Just, just know, we have a letter from Master Vernon for Mayor Nightpitch. Uh, do you want to do you want to show him the letter? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Look. <laughs> he just says. We have this letter. You can't look at it. It's uh. He says, I will, uh, dirty right now. I will inform the mayor that you have a letter for him again. Come on the morning, and I'm sure he'll be willing to meet with you. A corpse. And if there's another corpse, it's on your head, guard. He, uh, he has the look of a man who's heard a thousand tips about the murders, uh, already. All right, gang, get in the van. We're heading over to the captains, I guess. All right, yeah, making it back to the uh, captain of the guard. He is uh, he he is busy orchestrating investigations and uh, sending guards out to where the next possible murders might possibly be. Who wants to take point on this one? We've done a lot of talking tonight. <laughs> Well, because 
Going the received, received father is the uh, best bet. This seen father will now speak. <laughs> Ansel approaches and uh, lifts his hand uh, cordially in greeting to the captain. Good brother, we've returned after speaking, um, and thank you very kindly for making the arrangements to make that happen. I'm afraid we bring some more grave news, but also with it, some insight into these cases and some connections. I'm afraid time is short and we must speak with the mayor himself as soon as possible. He, uh, he kind of grins. Says, you got turned away at the gate, didn't you? <laughs> we may have. Unfortunately, the, uh, the mayor has been very busy and... Just about everyone in town has some theory about these murders, some suspicion about their neighbors. Not just the mayor, but, but me too. I've, well, I've dealt with hundreds of complaints. My, uh, my neighbor's a witch. My son's school teacher's a monster. It's well, so, uh... We have a letter that mentions the mayor by, by name from a victim, the most recent one. We are almost completely certain at this point, good brother, that the mayor himself is the next target in this case. If this creature, this abomination, has in fact taken the identity of the good master Vernon, then there may not be anything to stop him from infiltrating and getting within harm's reach of the mayor. He shakes his head. He says, no, no, the mayor is... Well guarded. He's probably the safest man in this entire city. And what if Master Vernon were to walk up to the guards and say, I would like to speak with the mayor? Well, we should probably uh, inform them not to let Master Vernon in then, shouldn't we? Perhaps it may be too late already. Listen, From I'm... earlier accounts we found in the keep of the, uh, the examiner's office, it states that this creature is at least as powerful as a bear, if not some other forest creature. He poses a tremendous threat to any. Also, we examined the skins and the corpses and determined that the creature has been simply changing skins, as we hey, suspect. You, you have a shit coroner. He won't even check to see if the skins match up with the bodies. He says, here's what I can do for you. I have very, very little sway over the mayor's schedule. However, I am to meet with him at his residence tonight after sundown. I can bring you with me. Plus five. <laughs> I, uh, that sounds good. It's supposed to be a secret meeting. He may be irritated that I've brought friends, but... It's the best he I can may do also for be us. irritated to be dead tonight as well. I'm afraid. Yeah. So if you if you wait for your own audience with the mayor, it could take a week or more. Of course, we will gladly take your offer. It is most kind, and there are no other options left to us at this point. All right. But Amen. if there's any way to advance that plan forward, please take it, for everyone's sake. So I just want their mozzarella sticks. As, as soon as as soon as the sun is down in the sky uh, m meet me in front of the gates of the palace we'll go in together indeed we will meet you at that time so you guys this will give you guys about f four hours before before sundown My good brothers, perhaps we should visit the church and seek their aid in preparations. I was thinking about the hen house. The hen house? Well, what were your thoughts on this, good brother? Uh, considering with the might of the church and the wisdom of the fathers, they are probably it's, it's just a hunch M might have been wrong. I mean, I'm just a big, dumb, angry person. I rebuke your words, but speak plainly, please. Good brother. 
something happened around the hen house there. Maybe it was just a coincidence, but that child mentioned that one of her neighbors wanted the hen house and they accused her. One of the bodies was found next to a hen house. But I don't know, maybe also we should check with Ordo Magica. What did they know? Last it was their, their wise people there who talked with Master Werner. Maybe some of his associates there might have have been his confidant. Maybe they have talked a bit more. That sounds a fair assessment, good brother. What of you, Bartolum and Nino and Fenya? What are your thoughts? Uh, it sounds good to talk to the mages. I mean, they talked to... He was doing some ritual there. They might know what... It, or some evidence of his uh, goings-on. I mean, if we could do both before tonight, how that would probably be good. We could split up and meet back at the gate. Indeed we could, if it's not possible to cross town within that time. I wish to clarify, I do not mean to uh, borrow the ear of the clergy in the church, merely their uh, barracks. But if it's unanimous, perhaps, that we should split for a time and then gather for this uh, incursion, then perhaps it should be so. But perhaps we should start by trying to determine the location of this hen house, since... Uh, the child, unfortunately, is no longer on hand, and he uh, glances at the pig with the looser ropes dangling all over it. <laughs> and I suppose we may ask the uh, the coroner, um, since they, actually, perhaps the captain himself would know, since they recovered um, a corpse from that location. All right, Steve, do we have time to do both before the meeting? To visit the wizards, and what was the second thing you wanted to do? Um, checking out the hen house that uh, the fourth victim was killed near and the little girl had talked about being near. Yeah, you can uh, you can do both. Uh, traveling first to the location of the uh, backyard hen house near, near Master Vernon's uh, home. Um, I won't even require any rolls. You can examine the the scene uh, thoroughly. It's still pretty gruesome and bloody because again, it was from the same the same day. Uh, questioning uh, questioning folks in that house and the surrounding houses. Uh, you can conclude for certain that this uh, this is not uh, the same place where that little girl lived. But other than that, there are no remaining clues at that hen house uh, to be found. Other than verifying the, the time that it happened, it's definitely recent. You notice Rajor looking at the chickens hungrily. <laughs> Might have been that what actually got him thinking about. That's really why he wanted to go there. Yeah. Alright, uh, we will... Go ahead and jump to the uh, to the wizards then. Uh, when you get there, you're actually forced to stand in a little bit of a queue. Uh, there are maybe two dozen people ahead of you. Uh, they uh, they take their turns having uh, long, drawn out conversations with a uh, small goblin dressed in wizard garb sitting on top of a giant stool so that he can see everybody at eye level. The conversation is pretty much the same. They want guidance from one of the masters or just entrance to the temple for research. Uh, they are all turned away uh, one by one. You realize that this goblin, uh, he, uh, he greets everyone very pleasantly, 
but he seems to be doing so with the main aim of not letting anyone in. That being said, eventually your turn approaches. He says, Hey, brother! Welcome! See, you're oh. small and green like me. We can get along. He says, I'll tell you the same thing I've told everyone else. There are no audiences with the masters right now. Well, what Very if we busy. know about a certain dead Master Vernon? He says, Master Vernon? Dead? How and when? Well, if, you wish, to, if you wish to know more, you must let us speak with the masters immediately. We have urgent news. He, uh... He sort of, uh, uh, squints as he, uh, as he looks, uh, as he, he, he uh, uh, looks you over to try and determine if you are, uh, uh putting a ruse <laughs> over on him or not. Um, and he says, you say, so size. can I flash a bit of magic? Like, uh, <laughs> like yeah, if, fire? You, yeah, if you, if you can identify yourself as a matter, uh, as a, a member of the, uh, Ordos Magica, you... You're actually allowed access to the tower whenever you want. Not necessarily access to uh, a Masters. master or any particular part of the tower, but but you could just go in if you wanted. Uh, as to get your friends in, though, yeah, he would need to be uh, uh, convinced. But he says, now, uh, Master Vernon, you say he's been killed. When? When, when did this supposed killing take place? Oh, my God, is he here? Is he here right now? He says, I'm afraid I have to keep the comings and goings of the wizards uh, This is urgent. Secret. He was murdered by someone who took his skin mere hours ago. Alright. I'll let uh, uh, Matt, you can make a persuasion check. You'll get a plus five bonus to it. Can, since <laughs> can I give him advantage? Since I'm a goblin and I've even though I have a bad persuasive, could I try it too? Because technically, since I'm a goblin and I have pariah what? with my own race... Oh, no, he already made it. I was going to say <laughs> yes, but he rolled a Can he still attempt it anyways? <laughs> <laughs> well, what I was going to say is just because with my pariah, I can... I basically, with the same race, I roll twice and take the hot, the better roll. Right, yeah, guys. With any other race, I roll twice two and take the worst role. Go goblins tend to have kind of a close bond with each other, yeah. yeah. So I, I would have definitely allowed that, but... We're good. He goes, well... Well, listen, Master Vernum has been in the tower, but he, he's already left here, and he he grabs a ledger. Every wizard, every person that enters has to, uh, has to sign. And he opens up the ledger. He says, right there, there's Master Vernon's signature. Uh... But he left some time ago. And you can see in the ledger, amongst a bunch of signatures, Master Vernon says, yeah, he visits regularly, almost every day. Can I compare the script to the script on the letter, the handwriting? Yeah, clearly Might different. The clearly, letter. clearly different handwriting. Yeah. And I'm so afraid this was not him. And this definitely Kate was signed in after his death, like... Judging by the time of the of the sign in, you're guessing that uh, the the imitator came almost straight here after the murder. But when did he leave? When he was in the in the hen house? He <laughs> um, really wants to get those hens. <laughs> Again. The uh, according to the uh, the ledger, Master Vernon was uh, he was inside of the tower for less than an hour. I think the skull is stored here, and maybe he stole it. The uh, the the goblin doorkeep says, "I'm not certain, but I'm uh, fairly certain he visited the ritual chamber while he was there, uh, limited to uh, to to masters only." Well, you should probably show us to the masters, some master, if you don't want more flames to start appearing over the. Town. He says, uh, wait here for a moment. He hops down off his stool and uh, runs inside. After, uh, after a short while, he opens the door. 
and says, Come in! And he hangs a little wooden sign on the door that says something to the effect of out to lunch. And uh, uh, brings you all in. Um, you're, you're made to wait for a, a fairly long time, more than an hour, uh, before eventually a, a very haughty pipe-smoking uh, wizard comes in. And between uh, uh, puffs of, the, of, uh, of, of smoke, uh, yeah, she, uh, uh, older, older heavyset uh, lady, she says, I'm Master Ufrinda. I understand you wish to have access to the ritual chamber. She puffs on her uh, pipe. I suppose so. We have actually more urgent matters to discuss. Says, what more urgent matters? I'm going to pull out the letter. Say, uh, Master Vernon has been murdered. She says, but he was just here. Yes, a uh, someone conducted a ritual to steal his skin. She says, oh. Uh, his appearance looked normal to me. I, uh, that's what that's someone who had magic. stolen his skin. I'm the keeper of the books in the ritual. We were in the ritual room. We were there together. I even signed a book out to him. What book? She says, uh, c- c- come with me. I, I signed so many out. And uh, she takes you into the ritual chamber. It is a... Uh, well-stocked, beautiful ritual chamber. It has any uh, any imaginable ingredients or magical components you would need for a ritual are in here. But surrounding the chamber, from floor to ceiling, are, are, are books, arcane manuals, uh, beyond even most wizards' comprehension. But uh, she she's going through her, her ledger, and you can see uh, Master Vernon's name in... Uh, she's got it written in. It's also the same imposter signature next to it. Ah, yes, it was instructions for a ritual. Uh, break link, as we call the ritual. Right there, and she shows you the ledger. Do I know what that ritual does? Uh, it cuts all magical bonds to a particular target, usually a person. Um, whatever magical uh, links or bonds you have on you, severed. Any any rituals affecting you, severed. Curses, severed. Bonds to artifacts, severed. He didn't say why he needed it, and I never ask. Say there was... My dear sister, a strong, unnatural attachment between someone of great import and a very, very cursed artifact. What benefit or detriment would perhaps result from bonding, or rather, forgive me, uh, severing such a a link or bond between one such person and one such nasty object? She says, well, there's... All manner of uh, cursed and corrupting artifacts that someone could... The skull of the king and the mayor. Says, I'm, 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 I'm not aware of any skull of the king. I can't imagine the, the mayor would be involved in anything that would require this ritual, but uh, who knows? You know how powerful people getting into things they shouldn't be. You don't sound terribly alarmed by the situation, sister. Well, it is alarming to think an imposter might have snuck into the ritual chamber. Not to mention the death of Master Vernon. I guess, why go through such extreme trouble to get this book? It is curious. You go ahead. Oh no, I mean, I was just saying, like, it isn't an... It does seem like a rather unimportant ritual to go to all this trouble to learn. Did, did 
this imposter say anything of note to, to you or, or, or make mention of where they were going? She shakes her head. She said, he came into the ritual chamber. I was here. Uh, studied the books for nearly an hour before he found the one that he wanted. Uh, I did think it was strange it took him so much time to find it. Master Vernon is uh, very familiar with the rituals here. Uh, but I mean, I didn't think much of it. Found the book that he wanted. I checked the book out to him as we do with all of our masters, and that was that. No mention of why he needed it or where he was going. Dear sister, what components and necessary, I suppose, things are required for such a, a ritual spell cast? For that particular ritual, I'm not certain. It would be in the book, though. Is there no copy? I'm or no I, other I, possessor such I knowledge? Even... So just out of game real quick. I don't even see any list of components for rituals in this game. Yeah, so, oh, so that's so nice. Rituals themselves in general don't require components, but there are situations oh, like right. this ritual room where bonuses can be granted to it. But yeah, in, in theory, uh, yeah, ri rituals generally don't need s special components. Magic's cool in this world, man. And hard. Yeah, you can throw sulfur at someone and just scald their flesh. That sounds pretty sweet. <laughs> and then you get corrupted. It has some. It and, does have some downsides, yeah. but yeah. And you start stealing stealing seals. Uh, All right. Stealing skins. Uh, but yeah, you guys can tell just by by talking to her and looking at the ledger. It seems that that was the only purpose of the imposter's visit was to find this particular mm -hmm. book and leave with it. <clears throat> Mr. Sister, you smart, you magic. Can you, can you, can you fix letter? She, uh, she takes a, a long look at the letter and she says, uh, yes, I, I have some materials that I could apply to this that would likely clean the blood off without destroying the ink. It would have to soak for a while. I'd be glad to do this for you. Would it be done before we have to go meet uh, at, the, at the mayor's gate? Uh, so sh she informs you that it'll take maybe three or four hours of soaking, so this would be after the meeting with the mayor. Okay. But she does tell you that even if even if it's past night, that they'll uh, they'll let you back into the tower to retrieve it, even though they don't normally take visitors after dark. So should we go to our meeting with the mayor then? How much time do we have left before the meeting with the mayor? Yep. Uh, after being made to wait for her for an hour and walking around the city, maybe an hour and a half. Is there uh, adequate time to visit the church? Hmm. I I'm going to say probably not. It's a lot of walking to uh, okay. to get to the church, yeah. Although, you can always visit the church uh, afterwards. Uh, let, me <laughs> After. let, let me ask you guys this. Is getting near our normal stopping time? I can end the session here right before the mayor. Or if you want to go for an extra 15 minutes, I can end it after the mayor, which might be a better stopping point, but it's up to you guys. I don't know if you guys want to want to end it here or go another 15 minutes. What does everyone's vote? I don't want to pressure anybody into playing too late. Kind of tired. Obviously, I didn't mean you got to vote, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can, we can end it here then, right before the, the meeting of the mayor. That won't be a bad starting point for the the There's a plenty of suspense to keep it interesting. There is. This is this has been an extremely interesting adventure. Very, I'll uh, say. Yeah. So no, nobody expected a murder mystery thrown into Symbolism. Right? I did like, not. Finally, some <laughs> intrigue. Everyone thought they were going into the forest or something. All right. We started <laughs> with killing some random people, and then boom. <laughs>
Well, they attacked us first. I like the way the adventure is written out because, like, in a in a classic adventure, it's like, oh, we're seeing Master Vernon. He's going to tell us what our what our adventure is. We're going to get a job from him. And then you get there, and you're like, oh, damn. <laughs> He's, he's completely. Yes, we have to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoy that little twist. Like I said, from a meta game, right? That's that's where you would normally get your adventure. Is yes. This guy that you're going to meet. Yeah. But uh. Steve, yeah. what did you expect to happen? With when, with the little girl and. <laughs> oh, I, I kind of expected she would either run away or you would just let her go. Uh. <laughs> Well, we let it go. <laughs> Had uh, actually the, uh, the 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 fight against the uh, witch hunter guy would have been really rough if he hadn't been uh, it's the kills. slain right away because those guys on their initiative there'd have been fifteen dudes uh, taking swipes. They're not super high damage. They do uh, they do four damage per attack, but you know it adds up. They yeah. pile up. They pile up. And yeah, I, I, I'm. Uh, I... I'm a bit uh, sorry about what happened, but uh, guys, just so you're warned, uh, this is again w what Rager can do. There are pretty bad things that can do worse, and don't get me started on what happens <laughs> if uh, mystics come against us. So, yeah, don't give so Don't let them mind control him, huh? Well, you, you, you saw that I have a spell that just does unavoidable damage. There are those. Yeah, no. The, the the magic in this system is uh, is is quite powerful. The uh, the corrupting effect is uh, a downside to it, but it's. Uh... Are there fully like corrupted magic users that don't have to worry about corruption? No. If you're uh, if once your corruption uh, gets to a certain point, you just turn into a monster. Sick. Uh, so there's there's lots of like heavily corrupted magic users that are showing signs of the blight. Like they'll start to transform, and there'll be a lot of visible signs. Uh, but like once once they go over their threshold, their body can't handle the corruption anymore, and they will turn into something. Ooh. Is there like a rapture equivalent city here, just full of just crazy ass wizards throwing like lightning at each other twenty four seven? Not not really. <laughs> just a bunch of cats and dogs with wizard hats shooting fireballs. But uh, consider uh, there is there are the undead which are totally corrupt, and they're yeah. actually in the next book in the advanced player's guide. So they're an option. So it could be an undead mm -hmm. sorcerer, and that's really sick. Yeah, they do. Yeah, okay. There there are optional rules to continue playing characters after they've reached the edge of their corruption. In this campaign, though, uh, you'll just become an NPC if you hit that point. A bad NPC. Challenge accepted. A bad, a bad NPC. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, all right. So uh, same. Let me make sure that my schedule is as I thought it was. Let's see. So we get it's like thirty XP for that, right? Oh, uh, you'll, you'll get your. XP That's like two levels at least, right? You get, you get your XP at the end of the uh, at the end of the adventure, not per session. Mm -hmm. Survive. Well, thank you guys for letting me join you. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah actually, fun we appreciate it. I appreciate it too because you you choosing that particular character. I think, like Matt said earlier, complimented the group uh, uh, well. I appreciate that. This is a fun group. There's a goblin. There's a, a hulking ogre. There's a man who is shadow and a beast and whatever he wants to be. And there's a smart man as well who can cast. Uh, unavoidable damage spells. Pretty cool. And the uh, master level of that spell is crazy. It hits everything. Oh my. I mean, that's that's fireball, man. Right? <laughs> Basically. It costs uh, a little bit of XP to get it up to master level. Well, I assume you have to be wizard at... Well, no, you don't have to be a wizard at master level. You just suffer permanent corruption if you do that. Yeah. True. And, and and actually, you can you can learn and cast spells from any magic discipline. Like wizards can cast like witchcraft spells and like so if you don't take spells. Those disciplines, you gain permanent corruption. Right, but you gain you gain permanent corruption for uh, for learning those spells if you're not a member of that tradition. And then I think if then, you're, I think if you study witchcraft, you get a permanent 
permanent corruption for just automatically for studying witchcraft. But, uh, mm. all right. So, yeah, I will, uh, I will see you all same time next week. All righty. See you guys. Good night, you guys. Okay. Bye, guys. Night. Take care, boys. Night, night. Oh, bye. Bye-bye. Later.